get started. So today I'm going to be playing two subscriber deck lists. This is ahead of SCG Philly, which is a team tournament this weekend. It is the team tournament for week one standard. So it's going to have week one Throne of Eldraine standard. All of Ixalan block and M19 is rotated out. Um, so that is the... That is where we're at on standard. Throne of Eldraine will also be legal for Modern and Legacy. This particular Modern deck, and I believe my Legacy deck, neither will have Throne of Eldraine cards in them tonight. Um, I do ha plan on having a stream with Titan Shift with Throne of Eldraine cards coming up next week. But for the time being, I am going to be trying out this Team Redolver list. This comes from Emma Handy's Twitter. This is probably, I don't know, a month-ish, maybe a little younger, but uh, this is a little old. But this is something that I'm really interested in, especially under the context of Modern Horizons. So you'll see a lot of Modern Horizons impact in this deck here with things like Plague Engineer, Renin 6, and the four Nurturing Peatlands. So Modern Horizons has a lot to offer the Death Shadow archetype. And while I don't consider myself a Death Shadow expert by any means, I did have a subscriber solicit me to play this... Uh, I don't even know if this list is the right word, but they subbed and they uh, they wanted me to play this list for their subscriber deck list. Shout out to Charm and Goofy, thank you for your support. Um, so yeah, we're going to be giving this a try. Like I said, there's probably going to be some outdated choices, but this deck is really interesting to me. Um, and yeah, wait, wait, so if we sub, you can play a deck of our choice, or is it a $15 donation? So it can be a $10 donation, or you can sub. Obviously subbing is cheaper, but subbing does require you to like interact with like the Twitch interface and stuff like that. So that is, that is the ways you can go about doing that. Um... And also the thing about a disclaimer I will give, especially now that I've gotten a couple more sub lists rolling in, is that I I only stream one day a week, and so if you do hand me a sub list, it may take me some time to actually get around to playing it. Like I said, I believe this one is like two or three weeks old, so um, I really apologize about that. Once I start streaming more, it will be easier to manage, but for the time being, like I still do a lot of my testing on stream, and I still try to work in some sub lists, some like you know competitive content that people look for look for, like Titan Shift and like. Delver humans, whatever whatever decks I'm known for, um, or that I'm playing at the moment, I try to work into my schedule. So that's a little disclaimer there for you, Juice Box. Anyways, I actually want to start talking about this deck. So let's start off. With, let's look at the mana base. There's a there's a couple interesting things I want to look at about the mana base before we start talking about the the meat and potatoes. Um, first off, is the two basics. Obviously, Path to Exile is a relevant card in this format with the, uh, the unbanning of Stoneforge Mystic. There is Path to Exiles floating around a little bit more than there was before. Also, cards like Assassin's Trophy that we're sporting and uh, Ghost Quarter that we're also sporting in the sideboard um, allow you to grab basics and not have, like, Strip Mine and Better Vindicate and stuff like that. You actually want to be able to leverage the downside of some of the more playable uh, interactive pieces in Modern. So, we do have two basics, despite the fact we are a Shadow deck and want to have a low land count and a bunch of lands that actually actually hurt us and you know these don't really lend themselves basics do not lend themselves to hurting yourself or having good mana while having a low land count so that is the reason we have basics uh we have two blood crypts and one overgrown two only three sh oh i'm sorry and one stomping ground we have four shocks to pair with our eight fetch lands reasonable that's pretty standard i think for shadow decks have your four shocks your eight fetches um and then we have four nurturing peatlands um what i will say about nurturing peatland is they seem like, they're going to be, obviously, something we can leverage very well in our deck, especially with the Ren and Sixes we have in the sideboard. But for the sake of turning on Death Shadow, they are slower than a Fetch Shock. A Fetch Shock is three points of damage. So, for instance, if you go turn one Fetch Shock, Thoughtseize or whatever, and your turn two is Fetch Shock again, that should cast a, a uh, that casts a 1-1 a one -one Death Shadow, right? Like, you've done six or eight to yourself. Fetch Shock, Fetch Shock, that's three, six, plus the Thoughtseize, yeah. So you've done eight to yourself, which allows you to play a 1-1 one, one Shadow, whereas I don't think if you play this land on turn one, it is possible for you to play a Death Shadow on turn two with only a two life. You have to have, like, a four life, uh, some way to deal with yourself four points of life. So, like, two Street Wraiths, a Thoughtseize, a Street Wraith, whatever. Like, you have to have more life to actually turn on your Death Shadow. So they're not as good with Death Shadow, at least for putting a Death Shadow on turn two, putting a Death Shadow on turn two, as something like a fetch land that grabs a shock land. So that is worth considering. Um, and yeah, that's about all I have to say about the mana base. 18 lands makes a lot of sense. We maybe can go a little bit higher. That's something I'm going to be looking at as we play this league, is we maybe can justify playing like another land or two just because we have nurturing peat lands as a four of, right? So we should be able to actually flood a little bit more and just crack these lands, and that should be fine. Um, 
Now, for our deck, we already traversed the Uvalwald deck, which a, uh, incentivizes us to put a bunch of different card types in our graveyard. And so that's why you'll see things like Mistress Bobble that uh, are not paired with Delve creatures like you see in the Grixis Shadow deck because Delve hurts our Delirium, whereas we we're trying to field Delirium. So we do have this Artifact Cantrip as our Cantrip of Choice. Actually, this is a deck that might want like a Once Upon a Time or two just to help find Death Shadows. I don't know how many is the correct number, so I'm just going to play this list as is. But in the future, something we may be wanting to think about is like, does this deck want a single copy of Once Upon a Time or maybe a second copy? I don't I don't really know. It may, may be over the place of some of these Manamorphoses that represent just like a free instant Cantrip, right? Um, anyway, we are traversing the Lumod deck. That's over... That, forms that, uh, that functions as a cantrip for Mistress Bobble. Now, another reason we can have a really low land count is Traverse the Ulvenwald, which allows you to grab basics. That's something I didn't actually mention, but is is somewhat relevant, especially in the face of something like Blood Moon, is that Traverse the Ulvenwald can go and grab a basic land always. So if you do keep a one lander, you can Traverse for your second land on turn one. Not what you want to be doing with the card, but does reward you for having basics in your otherwise, you know, quite color intensive and shock land heavy mana base. But Traverse the Overwald, designed to be a tutor for a land or a creature. So we have some uh, silver bullets in our main deck here in the form of Plague Engineer, Tireless Tracker. Just one-ofs that aren't super great to have a lot of in our deck, but we may want in some critical situations. And so they're nice to be able to grab a Traverse the Overwald. And you'll see this card is going to impact a lot of our sideboard decisions as well. All right, our, let's look at some of the black-based interaction. We have the Black Lightning Bolt, a.k.a. Fatal Push. Um, best black removal spell printed in this decade, and, you know, not really shocked to see four copies of that. Card's still very good, still a lot of creatures that die to it in the modern format, and specifically, like, Urza, for instance, is something that we are glad actually kills a, uh, we're glad Fatal Push actually kills Urza, because that deck is very, 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 very good. Um, also we have the eight discard spells, which you see happen in a lot of the modern, uh, black-based interactive decks. A little higher than something like Jun. Jun usually plays, like, six but we are playing the full eight for Thoughtseize for Inquisition. Inquisition is a little worse in our deck than Thoughtseize because it doesn't hurt yourself, but Inquisition is still good enough to justify playing in this format, and with all of like the decks like Urza, Burn, stuff like that running around, I think the discard is going is still very well set up to compete in this format. There's not a lot of that, like, I don't know, Jund-ish kind of decks that like discard is not very good against, so we're very happy to have a critical mass of discard spells. Okay, um... Let's move on to some of the other auxiliary spells before we talk about the threats. We have... Ooh, let's organize this a little bit so I can talk about it. We have the four Street Wraiths, which are just mostly a cantrip in our deck. We're almost never paying five mana. It's very hard to do to get five lands in our deck to actually cast this card. So more often than not, we're just cycling it to pay two life. Has upside when you're a Death Shadow deck to just be able to pay two life and cycle this card. Also feels Delirium because it puts a creature in the card, the creature in the yard very quickly. Even if you're playing it something like a Path to Exile deck that otherwise wouldn't be able to put creatures in your yard. Um, we're also playing four copies of Manamorphose, put instant in our yard. We can put sorcery in our yard pretty easily with discard spells, but we don't really put if there's no targets for fatal push, we're not really very good at putting instant in our yard. So Metamorphose, Manamorphose allows us to put instant in our yard very easily and can fix our mana. Like if we're operating off basics, then we can get some red mana or something. So it can it can help out like some of our mana issues, but for the most part it's just to put instant in the yard for uh, for traverse and for Tarmogoyth. Um we also have one copy of Assassin's Trophy. This is to enter problematic permanents like Ensnaring Bridge or like a, a Planeswalker that would otherwise be a big problem for this deck in the main deck games. Um, it's a nice card to have access to. You can't tutor for it, but other than that, I mean, it's just like still a very good utility card. You see decks like Jun leverage that as well. And you see a lot of like, a lot of the numbers are somewhat reminiscent of like a Jun midrange deck. We're basically just like a more aggressive Jun deck that leverages the synergies with Death Shadow and Traverse a little bit better, whereas Jun is just like a deck of more expensive cards that are less synergistic just like expensive to cast and I guess money expensive too, right? Um, we have a call Leon's command interacts with artifacts. Like I said, in snaring bridge, a card that is going to be pretty popular in the, in this world of Urza and also just a card that allows you to grind against something like the stone Forge mystic decks. So call Leon's command in a very, very, very good position in the modern format right now. Um, has a lot of utility against a lot of the top tier strategies. So happy to have access to one. And it allows us to recur our threats too. So if you kill kill, we have a low threat count overall. So if you kill those creatures, we can we can get them back from the graveyard. Two teamer battle range. This functions as a lot of our, uh, I guess our main deck combo hate. 
So if the discard spells aren't quite enough, Team or Battle Rage oftentimes can function as a pseudo time walk, allowing you to double the power of your attacker and essentially get another attack for free out of that creature. So when you're making a gigantic Death Shadow, this will get you through small blockers. Think like maybe Thopter Foundry tokens? I don't know, gee. But other than that, just like small creatures that are trying to block your large creatures, you can just go straight go straight over them with Team or Battle Rage, give yourself double strike and some trample, and also just turn up the heat against decks like Tron and combo decks like dredge that you're just wanting to get dead very quickly threat base you got four tarmogoyf which are designed to be very large in this deck i believe we're representing six of the eight uh, types in the main deck games no enchantment no tribal so on average we're going to try to get this thing to be a six seven but at least a five six and for two mana that's a hell of a good rate and then of course we have our one mana eight eight in the form of death shadow but still only eight actual beaters because they're not I mean, in modern, having a creature that just beats down is usually not good enough. These creatures are a little more dynamic than that, but overall, still not not an effect we want a bunch of. And then we have Tireless Tracker for grinding in the fair matchups, and we have a Plague Engineer for decks that are going wide and tall against us. So, pretty happy to see that. I wouldn't be surprised to see this card named Thopter quite a bit in the, the games we're going to be playing coming up. And, yeah, that's the main deck. A lot, lot of synergy, a lot of it makes sense. Not a lot of room, I think, to jiggle around, but I'm, I'm actually interested in exactly how much room there is because I wouldn't mind seeing something like a seasoned pyromancer or something over like maybe this spot. I don't really know. All right. Drake, you're on mute for me. Send a friendly wave my way. Hey, Teddy. Hey, Shadows. Why play Legacy tonight when you could play Hardened Skills instead? Yikes. All right. Um, moving on to the sideboard, Burn is one of the most popular decks in the format, so you'll see a nice four copies of Collective Brutality in the sideboard. We're not losing to Burn, folks. Not. No. No thank you. F the Burn deck. We're going to kill him dead. So, Collective Brutality, very flexible card. The discard is very, very good in our deck because it allows us to fuel Delirium and make our Tarmogoyce bigger. Well, also, hopefully, the modes will be more relevant. The the lose two gain two is ironically a little worse in our deck because we have Death Shadows, but I imagine the, the matchups where we're going to want to use that mode are going to be like Burn, where we're like kind of trying to keep our life total a little higher anyway and let them do the work to make our Shadows come into play. So we're playing like our lands tapped and like we're, re we're actually looking to recoup some life in that matchup. Um, looking for, we have three red and six here. I believe this is going to come in in like the humans matchup where there's things that die to the minus one and in like matchups like the blade decks where you're just trying to grind a little bit where you're going to like kill the early stoneforge mystics and then just like kind of set yourself up for this grinding position paired with the four nurturing peatlands that we can tutor for with traverse the open walled red and six pretty, pretty nice. Oh, I lied earlier. The planeswalker is one of the types that we don't have in the main deck. So we only have uh, five of the six or five of the eight. We don't have Tribal, Enchantment, or Planeswalker in the main deck. But we do have Planeswalker in the board, and a lot of them. Ren and Six, one of the most powerful cards out of Modern Horizons, you can tell. We're actually going to be playing Ren and Six in both of the decks we're playing tonight, so that should tell you about the power level of this Magic card. Uh, pretty excited to try this out. I don't know how often this is actually going to come up and be relevant, but it looks really sexy on paper, so I'm, I'm excited to give it a shot. Um... Got another Assassin's Trophy for answering problematic permanence, things like enchantments, things like uh, planeswalkers, and things like artifacts. Just a good catch-all when matchups where they're going to have both access to both of those things. So anytime that we're going to want trophies to be most of those kinds of cards, or just like maybe really big creatures that are in our way, although I don't really know where that's going to happen. Um, got a Colligons, another access to Colligons, uh, access to another Colligons command, which you can see mirrors our main deck, so we can kind of tailor our removal spells and when you're sideboarding. Also comes in in the fair matchups, so we're very well equipped to beat some of the fair decks that are going to be some of our harder matchups. Like, traditionally, one of your harder matchups for the Death Shadow deck is the Path to Exile decks, and so you're going to want access to... Um, some so a lot of grindy cards in order to actually be able to grind them out, especially grindy cards that don't die to Supreme Verdict and Path to Exile. Um, so Call on Command representing one of those pieces of that plan, and uh, also still being an artifact removal spell for you know decks that might be playing artifacts in this format. Um, and these last six cards, I believe, are all flexible targets for Traverse the Ulvenwald. So Collector Oof, you know, a functional Stony Silence that you can tutor for. Hazaret, this card, I think is going to be at its best against something like Jund, where, like, the Indestructible matters a lot. Like, it's not going to be good against the Path to Exiles, de Path to Exile decks, right? Because, like, it may get a hit in for five, or maybe not, but, like, they can kill it with a one-mana spell that they can also snap for one mana. Like, it's just not, not a good position. But this is good against the decks that are maybe trying to, like, Fatal Push, Terminate, or whatever, your stuff. So I imagine this is, like, for, like, the Jundish style matchups. And I don't really know where else maybe we'd want it against... 
I, I don't really know. We're, wherever, like, having an indestructible attacker, hopefully we'll figure it out uh, as we're playing matches. But for me, it looks like a card you want mostly for Jund, which maybe makes it too narrow for this deck. But it does actually attack for quite a bit, and the discard a card to deal to is also not irrelevant. It can do a lot of damage very quickly. So I'm, I'm interested to see where exactly this will fit in our numbers where we want it. Ten Street Hooligan is an artifact destruction spell. It is basically a two mana two one. Like it's basically a two mana reclamation sage if you have red mana in your deck, right? Where like if you pay a green to cast it, it costs basically a green and a red to destroy target artifact. It can be played as a two one, but that kind of sucks. For the most part, it's just a green and a red uh, reclamation sage that costs one less mana. So once again, something you can tutor for it, traverse the open wall for three mana. You can tutor for it and play it destroy an artifact, but you have to have green green red for that. But we'll see how often that actually comes up. Graveyard Hate. Unsurprisingly, we have Graveyard Hate that we can traverse for. <coughs> Yixla Jailer. Now, Graveyard Deck's not as relevant as they were previously, especially when Hogak was around. But, cards in Graveyard's losing all abilities. Still an, act, uh, an effect we're going to want access to, probably, in some subset of the games we play. Traverse being able to search for it. God, that is creepy. That is really creepy. Traverse being able to search for it. Really relevant on the card. Happy to have it. Plague Engineer, once again, for go-wide decks. Think like Humans, for instance. Humans, also traditionally one of Shadow's worst matchups. Plague Engineer and Ren and Six, hopefully being able to fix that. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the matchup is almost favored for Shadow now, just because these cards are so useful at uh, tackling the Humans' game plan. But, once again, we're going to want access to a second one, because um, sometimes there are, for instance, two twos that we want to kill. So, like, putting one on Human is not enough to kill all their stuff. But the second one on Human is, like, probably lights out. So having access to a second one to be able to tutor for is pretty nice and also increases your chance of naturally drawing it. Last but not least, Ghost Quarter for, like, Tron primarily, I imagine. Anything else with this problematic lands, like, I'll probably bring it in against uh, Amulet, for instance. We can tutor for it with Traverse, and we can recur it with Ren and Six. So we kind of have this, like, Crucible plan against, uh, against Tron. So that's pretty nice. But for the most part, it's just like pretty low impact, something that we'd want access to in our sideboard because it's very free and very powerful when you have it. But other than that, not that, not that flashy, not that sexy. It's no hazard. <laughs> um, I'm really excited about the Red and Six. I think the Red and Sixes do a lot to glue this deck together in the sideboard game. So let's give it a try. Thank you very much, Tarma Goofy, for your support. And let's play Modern. I want to play some Modern. Any questions before we get started? Yeet. My problem with Ren and Six is that people would already cite in rips in such cards against them. Why be more susceptible to graveyard hate? So, like, the rip decks are already kind of tough for us to beat, right? I'm a simple man. I see shadow content and I tune in. Thanks, Kratos. Alright, what is this? What the heck is this? Oh, did I just pay for something? Oh. Ah, leave event. I signed up for the wrong thing. Oops. Modern League. I knew that seemed expensive. Man, I'm dumb. Okay, well, let's actually play League. Or we could just sit here and wait for the challenge to start. I would play Embrith Shieldbreaker as a tutor for Artifact Hate. Seems like it's better. Well, let's look up what that card does. And we'll talk about it. I guess before we get started, don't, don't start the match yet. Embrith. I want to answer the question before I'm distracted by images. And Breath Shieldbreaker. Yeet. One red destructor artifact. Yeah. Sorcery. Is this a better 10 Street tool again? It's three mana to get the body, right? But you can tutor for it and play it for cheaper. So, like, it's green and a red to play, to, like, tutor and play. But it is... Hmm. But it is, like, three mana to get the creature out of it, so it would cost green, red, and two to get the creature out of it in the same turn, so it's, like, one more mana to actually get the creature out of it. I don't know. You're probably right. Like, being in one less color may be less free than we think it is. It's not strictly better, but it's probably close. It's definitely worth talking about. Shing for Shing with this deck doesn't hit Chalice. Oh, it doesn't hit Chalice? Okay, yeah, never mind. That is something I completely missed. Good call, Tarma Goofy. Good call. Yeah, okay. It's definitely not strictly better if it doesn't hit Chalice of the Void. Worth noting, you can't tutor for it to kill a Chalice of the Void because your Traverse would obviously get countered. But it is something that, like, you want access to. You don't want to be stone cold dead to a, a, a Chalice of the Void. All right, what are we doing here? Yeet. Yeet. 
All right, let's just let's just do this. There we go. Okay. This is kind of what I'm talking about, right? Like we have one man, we one man, one man. We have one man as street wraith and traverse. Now I feel like we're not looking to spew this traverse in order to actually get a basic. Like we'd much rather naturally find a land. So I think I think I'm gonna keep this because it feels like like despite the fact we don't have turn one discard spell, we have access to like a lot of what our game, main game plan is trying to do. And we have a lot of redraws that, like, you know, it could be anything. We could be building our own hand, but we're growing our Tarmogoyf a lot while we're building our hand. The the Tyler Shagger does look kind of bad in this hand, but I think I'm going to keep this. I think this has game in a lot of matches of Magic, especially on the draw where we're going to want access to more cards and, like, another look at a second land. This is, like... This is where, like, if there's a bobble in this hand, I would just screw it all up. Like, fetch land plus street raid plus bobble. I'm just like, dude, I, I don't know what I want. I have no idea. What do you want from me? I have no idea what cards I want. I want another land. Does that help? Probably not. A Marsh Flats strategy deal. Thought sees me. Uh, I don't think they take Street Wraith. And if they take Street Wraith, it's not the end of the world. We don't mind, I think, traversing. It's probably a good sign that they're thought seizing us here in game one. Probably means they're playing our kind of game plan. This Tyler Striker is going to be good. Wouldn't be shocked to see them take either of these two green creatures. I don't think the rest of our cards are very good. Like, all of these could just be another card, and that's fine. So, I expect one of these two green creatures to go. I'm not feeling shadow. Oh. Hmm. Opponent is deep in the tank here. I mean, it doesn't seem like super hard of a hand of thoughts. He's like, you can't take this. These are all the same card. AKA just like draw a card for free. And then so like one of these three, they took the traverse. That's fine. I feel like the green creatures are on average a little bit better, but maybe they're scared of Death Shadow or something. Well, that's a hell of a pickup. Uh, I think we just hold the Street Wraith as long as possible. We definitely grab a green land because we have a very, very light splash of red. So Overgrown Tomb is what we're looking for here. Yeet. 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 Black. Thought sees you. That was a good pickup. Thought sees was basically the best draw possible. I was mentioning how we didn't have a discard. Oh shit. Uh well, it makes sense now that they didn't take the green creatures. I thought there were gonna be some kind of like Jundish deck or something like that, or like maybe like taxes. They're not. They're not. We are playing against a smallpox, likely lingering soul strategy. I also imagine this strategy is very good against us. Hmm. Well, I think the smallpox is just better because we don't have a second land, so we probably are priced into taking the smallpox, which is a little frustrating, but it's fine. And yeah, he wants to fetch a basic turn one. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I was thinking maybe John that's trying to preserve life, but and like has a bunch of lands in hand. Like that was what was sold to me, but like the marsh flats is weird for sure. Now, now it's probably like some kind of tokens this strategy. Definitely a pox strategy. Land. Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize taking Fatal Push is not irrelevant. Let's try to hit a land first. It's not the end of the world if we miss. Which we did. But if they're drawing threats, then we're in a little bit of trouble. They drew another land. They do have a redraw on one of their lands. Um, all right. They have three lands in hand, which is great for us. We have all all spells in hand. Would like to draw a second land at some point, but it's not the end of the world. We can take a draw step or two with them. Lingering Souls is kind of the nightmare draw. <laughs> hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this could be a blade deck, though. Because, like, 
Playing Smallpox in your Stoneforge Mystic deck seems really, really loose. I mean, if it is a Stoneforge Mystic deck, then I guess as soon as we start making land drops, like, this Colgon's Command is going to be really good. Thoughts ease. It is fine. All of our cards are uncastable at the current moment. Hmm. <laughs> Though, taking the Traverse does hurt quite a bit, given that we do not have another land. Would have loved to be able to, like, Traverse for a Swamp there and, like, Thoughtseize them. Would have been great. <laughs> Poet decides to take Tarmogoyf. We shock in this? No, we are not. Oh, yeah, they drew that Thoughtseize, right? Street Wraith. We take those. We take those. Redraw. Peatland. Peatland's a good pickup. We're getting our life total nice and low. I don't know if that's good. Alright. Let's cast this. We're going to make a black and a green, I think. The green's a little loose, but we're looking for shadows. That ain't it, Chief. I don't see a reason not to spew this one, too. The only reason I can think of is like drawing a basic here makes it to where we can't cast Colgon's Command at all, but we need a threat. Okay. Alright, well, I mean, if I was willing to spew the second one, I'm willing to spew the third one. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? All of my cards just draw cards. Um, let's get an idea of what they're about to draw. A Lingering Souls? Fuck! <laughs> no! Alright. Fine. Immediately, I'm thinking that our low land count does not lend itself towards Tireless Tracker being good in our deck. Now, Plague Engineer, as soon as we draw a Traverse, is going to be delicious. That is fine. I think we're just playing Tracker next to Oh, daddy. Oh, that's so good. Oh, I'm sorry. And look, I drew that basic, so my call against command's uncastable. Um... They have one card in hand. It's a silent clearing. Yeah, that's a, that's a hell of a magic card. Now the question is, do we get greedy with it? Do we get greedy? Sick vampire, sick vamp tutor. Yeah, I don't know if I'm supposed to play it as the problem. Like, so if they draw a discard spell, they can discard me. They've been through two. If they draw a removal spell, they can kill it. And they've been through one. Two, if you count smallpox. In that case, the numbers are even. Makes me think that they have more removal spells than discard spells, which makes me want to hold it and just play the tracker. So, like, this may this is a little risky. I admit. I can just add black, right? Oh, yeah. Look at that. This is a little risky... But I want to incentivize them to try to kill me because hitting me for four kills me in two turns. And so they can hit me for two here and then I have to have two removal spells not to die in like basically in a three turn clock. So I want to incentivize them to flash this back so we can get both halves of it. But if they draw a discard spell, I get very, very, very punished for this line. It'd be like that, chat. It'd be like that sometimes. Tilt. Well, it's going to be a tough one to win. Won't lie to you. If we draw a red source, then we can... Collagon's Command 1. So we have Push Trophy. Take 2. They crack Silent Clearing. Too greedy. Should have taken the one and a half for one instead of risking it. I don't know if that's true, Cheesehead. I don't. Re I don't really regret it. I mean, obviously it like didn't pan out, but I think my logic that they probably have more removal spells for one creature on my board, especially with things like Liliana the Veil probably being in their deck, than they have discard spells, and they drew a discard spell. So I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's probably fine. Give myself an extra turn. 
Yeah, that is fine. Probably going to push one trophy the other. That way I can live as long as possible. Especially if I draw... I want to be able to fetch Shock a Red Source if I draw one. And so... And then, like, get this Plague Engineer back. Oh, hell, maybe if we, like, kill all of them. There's only one left. I won't even do it. A Gideon is probably their best possible draw. If they have that Gideon Ally Zendikar card in their deck, they can just, like, play an Anthem and kill me. All right. Uh, black. Cast that. Uh, black, green, trophy one. Doesn't feel good. Doesn't feel good. But this is the price you pay when you die to your own decisions. <laughs> I regret. I have regrets. That's fair, Cheese. That's fair. I mean, it definitely didn't pan out. Like, I'm not going to pretend like this obviously went our way. But, like, if I'm in this position again, I think I, I think it is correct to take the same line I took. As long as, like, as long as I have the same information I have now. Like, if I get to see their deck list and it turns out they have, they don't have Liliana the Veil, they don't have that many small pucks and pushes and paths, then, like, maybe there's a universe where I, like, do play it because I know they have more discard spells than removal spells. But in a world where I think they have more removal spells than discard spells, I think incentivizing them to try to, like, race me by flashing it back and, like, trying to get all of it. When we know that we're going to have trouble just answering the two tokens. Like, it is going to be problematic enough that it's a, there's a real cost to them just going removal spell flashback souls if I play the uh, play the Plague Engineer. Means that, oh, Jesus Christ. All right, well, I think we're on no outs. Damn. There's a goofer. Yep, we died. We got as punished as possible. I think how many times I've held a key card in a black mid-range mirrors and had it hit with discard. But I'm sure it's been every time. That's fair. That's fair. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Max punished. Excuse me. All right. Well, I like things that kill souls and recoup card advantage. So I'm in. I'm in on Renin Six. I'm in on Plague Engineer and Callgun's commands to recur said Plague Engineers. I am out on Assassin's Trophy. That card seemed kind of embarrassing. Now, if they have a Snaring Bridge, we have answers for it. But if they have some kind of enchantment problem, like Rest in Peace, we're going to be in a little bit of trouble. But it, we may try to hedge for that by just playing Tarmogoyf. Their, their deck lines up very well against Tarmogoyf. Being able to, they're like, they're a path deck, they're a push deck. They're also maybe a Rest in Peace deck, although they have Lingering Souls, so maybe not. But like... Overall, I think they're going to be kind of good against Tarmogoyf, but we may have to just get all these pushes out of our deck and we don't have room anyway. Ugh. Ugh. I hate it, chat. I hate it. Thanks. I hate it. We're going to try to catch catch the rips with the discard spells. Oh, the tier of battle rage just sucked too. Jeez, man. We have so many bad cards. Oh, but this this hazard's probably good. This hazard's probably really good. Do we want another land? Is that insane? Like, I'm boarding in, like, things good with lands, and they have utility lands. This feels kind of crazy, boarding in another land. I like 19 lands. All right, all right. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. We can just cut all the removal spells. Maybe we can leave, like, one trophy and cut, like, a goof or something. Derp, 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 derp. Or we can get, like, a discard spell. Discarding the smallpox deck does feel kind of five-head. All right, I'm going to keep one trophy. Just in case they have something I, like, want to have an out to. But... We're going to try this. We're going to try this. You're adding some threes and a four. Exactly. The thing is, it doesn't help cast my two drop. Would you like to play first? Whew! This hand's nice. Cute. Unfortunately, this doesn't double shadow, right? Because this is only four life, but this will double shadow on turn three. Unless we draw a Street Wraith. We can wheel a Manamorphose into a Street Wraith. That would be sicko. But, for the time being, we're not there. And we can play one Shadow on two with a Thoughtseize draw. Just going to grab a Blood Crypt, because we do have Ren and Sex in our deck. Blood Crypt, yes. Black Thoughtseize, you. Probably taking their discard spell, realistically. Oh, jeez. They have one land. They have one land, and card's good against us. All right. So... What is the best thing in their hand? 
given that they have one land. We have a lot more lands than them, so Smallpox sucks. We're not taking that. Lingering Souls is also kind of slow, so we're probably not taking that. Fatal Push is the most castable thing, so I feel incentivized to take that. Kai's Guile says you gain four, not we gain four. It's a three mana card. Makes me sack a creature and exiles cards from my graveyard. This is probably the most obnoxious card if they had a bunch of lands, but they don't. I don't know how quickly we're actually going to kill them, but I think we can get under them faster. So I'm tempted to take a Fatal Push. I'd still take Pox. Really, Brad? Why? Like, how soon are they poxing? They're not poxing on two, right? Like, we have two lands. There's no way they're going to pox on two. So when are they going to actually cast Smallpox where they wouldn't be casting, like, Kai's Guile or Lingering Souls? Like, I feel like they're not casting this card ever. It kills Shadow is my thought. Well, so does Push Push Purge and Kai's Guile. These four cards also kill a Shadow, even, no matter how big they are. Push, Purge does make it is the, okay, Purge is the one that kills Plague Engineer the easiest, and that's an argument for that. So we have to go get through the removal anyway. I mean, do we? How many removal spells are we actually going to get through, assuming they, that we're, are we going to have to get through? So Purge doesn't kill Tarmogoyf. I think that's merit to kill it, taking Fatal Push. The fact they have two pushes here is a real tilt. Pox sort of generates card advantage if it discards souls, if it tags Shadow and bends souls. The thing is, if, if they're binning souls, I think I'm actively excited about that, right? Like, that's two souls I don't have to contend with. Pox lets them get card advantage with souls and stuff. This is a really tough decision. Kind of a post to Twitter. Maybe I'm just dumb. The whole chat's just like, hey, take Pox, you five head. But I just think the Pox sucks. I'm going to save this for later. Maybe I'll post it after. Maybe I'll post it after if people think it's interesting. I'll take a poll in the chat. Who thinks this? Who thinks this is an interesting decision? All right. Push is the best card. That's what I'm thinking. I'm here for push. So we got two people for push, but Brad, Brad Carpenter counts for two because he's smart. Oh, geez. I'm not going to take too much longer on this because I actually do want to make a decision and get on with it. But I think this decision really worth is worth talking about. So what does our next turn look like? Assuming they don't hit a land drop, they just play their land, they pass, they have push up. If we take like a push then we're going to fetch shock, cast morphos, maybe making black green and trying to hit something that matters. So they have two steps at a land, which makes smallpox better. If we untap on turn three, play land shadow shadow, they smallpox, they have to sack their own land, discard souls, kill one of our shadows, we keep a shadow, and then they still have push for the second shadow, which puts us not in a good spot. I just said what my gut says. Well, like, talking about it now, it does sound to me like the smallpox is going to end up lining up really well against our hands. The thing is, they're going to buy so much time having three removal spells. God, this is so tough. My opponent's like, what the hell is taking so long? Ugh. They can edict so many things. They're just going to kill everything we have. So what's what's the best card for them, assuming they just kill everything we have? Honestly, Lingering Souls. I almost should just, like, take the damn... What if I just took the Lingering Souls? What the, I'm, like, metaing myself where, like, I'm considering taking the Lingering Souls to make the Smallpox worse. That's just nonsense. It's Pusher Pox. I don't know. Just click one at random at this point. Fair. All right. Let's take the, let's take the Smallpox. I, I want to take the Smallpox. Brad said take the small box. He's better at shadow than me. My instinct was take the push, and I kind of want to see how this game plays out, knowing that we, you know, obviously now took the push. I'm sorry, I took the box. All right. Well, the goofer is interesting. Okay. I think this has to grab a stomping ground if we're taking Shockland. Oh, no, I can grab another Blood Crypt. Uh, how much black do I need? 
potentially a lot. We're doing double shadow. I don't think we need that much though. I'd rather just have all my colors. I'm gonna cast this to grow the Tarmor Wife even though it doesn't really matter. But maybe it does. Maybe there's a universe where it does. Oh. Okay. So we play Tarmog Wife, it's gonna get pushed, right? Then we get to go Ren and Six as a source of card advantage, and then like Shadows. Hmm. This Ren and Six was a great pickup. Hopefully they missed their land drop. Missed, damn it! Yes! Alright, we're lucky. We're lucky chat. Oh, I just screwed this up, too. It doesn't matter because they're going to kill it anyway, but... I could have made the shadow one bigger. And if I draw the shock, I get punished. Because there's a blood crypt left in my deck, I could have, like, fetched shock tier to grab a, a land. But I'm a five head. All right, let's work through this removal. I'm pretty sure Vampiric Tutor isn't legal in modern. How are you playing? I mean, hell, I Vampiric Tutored last game and still found a way to punt this game. Yeah, Vamp Tutor's so good. You want to jam creatures and get Purge? Yeah. Well, now the Purge doesn't kill Tarmagoof. They hit their land. It's fine by me. Oh, Purge hits the Ren. That's okay. So now, what do we know? What do we still know? We know... Gone. Gone, gone, gone. The last of their cards kind of fucking blow. That was also a good draw. We take those. We take those. Alright. Hello, I want that, please. Please, Shock. Thank you. Hello. Moto, why is my time ticking down even though I clicked yes? Moto, are we okay? Hello? Knock knock. Magic online. I, I said yes already. Hello? Okay, alright, alright, we're back in it. Magic online's back back in the game. Oh, I'm gonna struggle with Inquisition. All of my time goes down. Yo, what is going on? Ah! Help! I don't know what to do. Do I just like close it and reopen it? Like, what's happening here? Rip Moto. Fucking rip. Oh, now I pissed it off. I click cancel. Do I just, like, close Moto and reopen it? Is that the best way to handle this? Probably is. Let's do that. Hopefully hopefully nothing breaks. Oh. No, I don't want to concede this match. What the fuck? <laughs> you child. Click close and hide, not concede. Hide event. Die. Yes. Ugh. Sick program. They just updated it today. Maybe something in the new update screwed up. <sighs> what a tilt. This is like an interesting match, too. I want to play this match. I feel like I'm learning long and failed because you were connected in a different location. Please try again now. What? Did you just disconnect me? What is happening? Did like my account get hacked or something? What, what, what even is happening here? Nice. Look at this. Something tells me this is going to work out great.
Magic Online. Hello. Knock, knock, knock. Is anybody home? Can I like do things in this part of the client? I can. Maybe we get a free league on Watsy. Yeah, maybe we do. I mean, I don't want a free league. I want to make good content. That is what I want to do. But it appears that that is not what I'm going to get. I would like to play my match, please. Unable to join Q. Currently match pending. Sounds great. Can I actually be a part of it? Yeah, look, we, we got the log. Maybe we just keep doing this until it actually, like, works. Head event. Sounds great. Sorry, your connection has failed. Restart magic online. The internet's great. All right, cool. I apologize for any and all struggles here, chat. Oh. Uh, somebody else is saying they are having moto issues as well. Apparently, this is kind of like completely wide. All right. <sighs> Let's communicate with them. Let's check Twitter and see what's going on. <sighs> this is very frustrating. Everything was supposed to be fine by this time today. Hello. Oh God. My current current. Hey, we did it. We're back. We're back in the game. Another smallpox and another push. They drew a third push and another smallpox as their draw steps. Holy shit, chat. Ah! Well, I actually think we're leaving the smallpox now. Let's just take the push, play threat, threat, and if they smallpox us, we have no cards in hand, sack one of our threats, and then they're down lands and can't cast lingering souls. That is my plan. That's what we're going to do. We're going to take this push. Black, green, here's this thing. Black, here's this thing. And we're going to keep this one because they can... How do they escalate this thing? How does this card work? Choose two. They can sack a thing, make a 1-1. One, one. It's fine. All right. So now they can... Oh, no, they drew a third land. Damn it. Now they just cast the stupid thing. All right, we're probably dead now. <laughs> My opponent is drawn incredibly well. I'll take the one that gets worse when you exile my graveyard. Sounds like they probably should have made a 1-1 one, one there. I think they should have made a 1-1 one, one there. What's up, Drake? What's up, Rampaging Narwhal? Narwhal. Finally got Marty's Shadow in the mail. I'm happy. Oh, I'm very, I'm very, very glad to hear that. All right. My turn. Good one. Bobble. We take those. Uh, this is going to die to a smallpox. So we should not crack this on their turn. There's a train coming. Oh, fuck, I missed the attack. Cool. This is fine, chat. This is fine. This is fine. This league has gone fine so far. Everything's fine. All right, well, let's play as if they were at 10. They're not obviously going to play that way, but let's let's analyze this matchup as if they were at 10. And if they die at 4 or less, or if we die when they're at 4 or less, then we know what happened. But it doesn't really impact anything except the amount of ticks I get at the end of the league. But 
It is very frustrating, obviously. Small box. You got it, buddy. I'm going to sacrifice this. And I think this, I think if they draw like a land removal spell, I want to have access to all my colors. And they get to go grab a land. Did they have the flagstones the whole time? When did they draw that? All right, they're not casting souls. I mean, let's just figure out what they're drawing. Hopefully not another ringer, silent clearing. Whatever, that's not really a blank, but. Traverse is nice. Traverse is big game. So, once again, we know they're drawing silent clearing. I expect in the flashback souls, we're going to want to traverse for. Um, we're going to want to traverse for the plague engineer. So, we're going to let them flashback this souls. I expect them to play clear and crack it before flashing back souls, but this was a big pickup. Yo, dudes, how's it going? How's it going, game boy? Two for five seconds, I already jinxed you. Traverse for Megas of the Moon. <laughs> Busted. They have a basic in play. I'm muted in class, but good luck in your general. Thanks. Thank you. Room. My opponent is debating what to do. I swear if they draw... Alright, perfect. Perfect, 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 perfect. Everything's great. Everything's great, chat. Everything is wonderful. Alright. Land. Oh, no, we can't. We're, we're a type short. I thought we had it. Dicks. Right, because this counts on resolution? Oh, no, that's so bad. Annabellius, thank you much for the fall. I really appreciate it. Alright, well, to six we go. Uh... Where we go? <laughs> Ren. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. We take those. We take those. We take those. This match has been insane. Just utterly insane. All right. Now, if they attack Ren, we can pick up the shock land. And still not be able to do anything. Tilt. All right, never mind. We're probably drawing a card this beat land. They're drawing a card. That's fine. I imagine they're going to attack Ren. We're going to traverse for Shadow. Yeah, we can't traverse for a thing because there's only three types. Mirren. Ren it is. Smart move, opponent. Did you draw a good one? This looks like a really good one. That's a really good one, Jet. Okay. Well, we have to find an immediate answer to that, so let's crack this. Bobble. Nice. Manmorphos. That puts instant in the yard, which allows us to traverse for free. So we can traverse for the thing that grabs a soul... We could just minus and traverse now, but I think we need the land. Ugh, there's a lot going on here. Best possible draw. It is among the best possible, yes. I think a trophy is probably a little better, right? Because we can, or like if this was a trophy, we could shoot this, trophy that, and there's only a 2-2 in play, and then we can like traverse next turn for just like a blocker. I don't know what to do. Wishing I had a vampire hex mage right now. I think I'm supposed to bobble first and look and see if I want to draw this card next. Question is, what am I doing with this Ren? I think you can shoot souls. But what does that do? Like, what does it accomplish to shoot souls? Like, it puts this in the yard. But, like, right now my thought process is pick up Peatland... Play Morphos Traverse for Plague Engineer. Plague Engineer on Spirit. Block Gideon. Hope to draw something that gets us out. Take two. Go to one. That is my thinking. 
It doesn't sound very good to me. But I don't really have a better line at the moment. God, this deck is very hard. I think you can't shoot souls exactly. So, let's lead on Bobble. Because that's like the most free thing to do. Can't win if you shoot souls. Play to win. Draw a good card. On the list. Do I want this card? Is it a good one? Assassin's Trophy, please. Forest. That ain't it, Chief. Um... What can I do about that? I can traverse and try to win the windmill the morphos into a trophy and leave them with a 2-2. But that leaves me traversing for a basic. So like, is it more likely for me to blindly hit the one of Assassin's Trophy now or to take the line I was discussing? Probably it's more likely for me to win if I take the line I was discussing. So I guess we'll pick up Heatland. Traverse to shuffle, maybe. Yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm supposed to give it another turn. So, yeah, I think we're going to. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to make sure I do this right. We're going to pick this peatland up. Maybe this gives me the most looks at trophy. I don't know. God, this is tough. Why is magic so hard? Who signed up for this? Green. Black. No more foes. Make it black and be green. Traverse. Grab. Hazard doesn't do it, although it is a draw to keep us alive, I think. We still need Plague Engineer. Forest, preserve a life. And name Spirit. Spirit. Well, if we'd hit them for four, they'd be at nine right now. So, not really feeling too punished. But I will be later when we're in race mode. Probably time out there's a game three. Maybe. I mean, we can play pretty quick. But, all right, well, that just kills us. Blech. Tilt. We tried, chat. We tried. Our probably drew pretty well. Maybe their deck is just all good cards against us, but wow. That was a rough match one. Because I feel like, like, like what chat said, we vampiric tutored multiple times. Like, we drew the exact card we were looking for on multiple occasions. And, like, maybe you can make an argument I threw game one. But they also did not draw half bad. My opponent did some vampiric tutoring themselves. All right. This hand looks great. No discard spell, but we got, like, bobble plus fetch land, so that's kind of nice. Island Hedron Crab. Okay. Well, now we're going to get milled. That turns on Traverse. Fun fact, I don't think I've ever beat a mill deck in a competitive environment. Ever. Let's play Bobble. Let's Bobble ourselves. Thankfully, our push actually has a target. Bobble ourselves. We want this card. Nurturing Peatland. I do not think we want that card. So, let's play this. Have you played against Mill in a competitive environment ever? 
I played against Mill twice at SCG Dallas this year alone. I've played against Mill in a competitive environment, I believe, two other times beyond that. In two of those four, I was playing Titan Shift. Uh, I don't think there's any reason to take a draw step before pushing this. Like, I don't think there's a universe where we don't just push this, so we're just going to push it. And F6, get that sweet, sweet F6 value. It's nice. It is worth. It is really nice that we dodged a, um, a archive trap there. But yes, I have in fact played quite a bit of mill. <laughs> Our best strategy was set deck to start the start the event to a fair. Well, they had the aboro combo too. All right, they just milled us. Is traverse on yet? Instant sorcery land. Yeah, traverse is now on. So we can traverse for stuff. Although we're going to want to shock our lands into play because we need to make sure we have enough lands. I think we're just going to go Tarmagoof. And then we're going to go next turn, lose some life, play traverse for shadow, shadow, shadow. That looks like a good turn to me. So let's do that. Uh, what do I want? Uh, black sources. I want a fuckload of black sources. To go rune two. Yes. Black. Red. We're going to make metamorphose. This one I think is going to make... Black. Black. No, I can't. I have to make black green. Goofer. Here's one goofer. What does this card say? At the beginning, you have to have delirium. All right, cool. Is one goofer okay? Go. Wouldn't mind getting one more type in the yard. Make it a six seven. What's this for three? They have no black mana, which is nice. Oh no. Well, now they have the Abaro Hedron Crab combo busted. Let's see if they have another, like a fetch land or something. They do. That's no bueno, chat. It's no bueno. Yup. Well, we can't interact on their turn, but we can put a big clock into play. We got 41 cards, third of the way to the dead. We're only going to plan on pulling one more card out of our deck. Millus, Millus. They did not grab a black source. Chat, what the fuck? Do they not have glimpse of neat or glimpse of the unthinkable in their deck? Oh god, what the fuck? Ah! I'm in danger. Okay. That's not good. I no longer am interested in losing very much life. But I have to lose some. So let's check. Yeah. Green. Traverse. Grab a Death Shadow. Play one. Since they know about it. Go to combat. Attack. Hello. They got two chub blockers, and they got a very good blocker. This is pretty scary. We could thought seize them, but I think I want to do that next turn in case they decide not to attack. Because I can lose a bunch of life if they decide not to attack with Jace's Phantasm. But for now, I want my shadows to be as like small as possible and still be in play. Field of Ruin. E. I have to shuffle for this, right? Tilt. I think we're going to fail to find... Oh, God. Well, that's a pretty good one. Especially in combination with their Mana Scribe. Yeah, they didn't attack with Jason's Phantasm. That makes sense. Yup. I always yield to this. Hopefully we don't die to it. 
street race. Okay, what are we doing? So if we attack, they block badly, we can make our stuff pretty big. Or we can thought seize them. How many cards you got left? 28? We just can't put ourselves in the position where we die to this card. So we can lose 5 and go to 7 and not die. I think we're going to do some amount of that. We're definitely playing this. No matter what, we're doing this first. Tarmogoyf. Now it's about, about whether or not I want to Thought Seize them. I think I do. 27 cards, let's Thought Seize them. If it's an Archive Trap, we really want to catch it. Snap cast your mage. Alright, that's fine. Done. So now they have seven points. Okay. Let's just attack and we can we can anthem our death shadows by one if they block with anything with power. This is a lethal attack, they have to block something. Double block. Oh no, they don't know how. Oh. Are they going to get blown up by this peatland? I mean, maybe they're just fine trading both. Um, okay. Make a black. Okay. 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 They go to three. We can mill one, two, three, four, five, six cards and not lose... So we should put lethal in play. So we're gonna play the storm wave. Here's storm wave. Go. So we're gonna mill six cards. I assume they're gonna get delirium this turn, so we'll mill three more, and that still doesn't kill me. They're gonna have to draw something that like mills a lot of cards, or they're dead. Which is a nice spot to be in. Hey Ace, how's it going? How are you? Got him. That was a strange game to navigate. Doing well. How is your week going? It's going fairly well. I'm really excited for Philly this weekend. I'm taking the whole day off on both Friday and Monday around it, so it's kind of like I have a four-day weekend. And I really, really like the food in Philly. And it's honestly the first time I'm flying to a Magic tournament by myself. Like, I'm the only one going from, from Alabama, like, as part of my crew. So that's something I'm pretty excited about. I finally get to watch. How's it going, Shadows? Hey, we're playing Shadow. Look at look at that. We got the name, too. Uh, we're playing some... This is Traverse Shadow, though, instead of, like, Grixis Shadow. But I had to talk to someone for, like, an hour. That sounds frustrating. Have you had a chance to play the new standard yet? I haven't played much. I played in the streamer early access event and tried to make that blue-red spells deck work. And it was fine. It was a fine deck. But um, in general, like, I have been following a lot of the new standard content to help uh, both my teammate... Uh, Zach Allen, my standard player for this weekend out, and to help uh, Jessica Estefan out because she's doing her MPL split. So I've been I've been doing like a lot of standard learning. Plus I'm gonna have to learn it for the Invitational anyway, so I kind of would like to keep my finger on the pulse. What the hell am I doing against fucking Mill? What do I do? This this card kills. Okay, this card takes Mill spells, and kills Hedron Crab, but is a million mana. It's 500 mana. Calling on Command looks like a dunk. It kills the thing and. Uh, what's it called? Recurs threats from our yard after they get milled. And it can blow up the stupid Mesmeric Orb, which is probably one of the cards that we lose to the most. This card's like aggressive. Do I want this thing? Like, what if I just like beat him up with this thing? Is that stupid? Tell me that's stupid. I think they're an Ensnaring Bridge deck, so we might want this crap. They often have Ensnaring Bridge. I think I'm going to bring this crap into Hedge. I want like these cards. I want discard spells. I want Tina Rotterdam for sure. Plague Engineer sucks. Tracker sucks. Um, I'd like to say Traverse sucks, but honestly, Archive Trap's going to get us at every point in the game. Tracker Engineer, seem, yeah, they seem really bad. Um, they're going to mill us a lot. So, like, maybe some of, like, the slow trips are kind of bad. Like, what if we just, like, trimmed a little bit on, like, the things that don't play to the board and force us to, like, use our mana? Because, like, they're going to mill us. So we're going to have Delirium a lot fucking easier if they're milling our cards. Um, 
But I think I still want all the ways to hurt myself. Or, this, these make our charm voice bigger, whereas I think we have more instants in our deck. I don't really want to leave all the pushes in the deck, though. Let's cut, like, one push. Just, like, trim on stuff. This seems fine. I don't know if trimming on a push against the... Oh, I need a card back. Uh, I don't know. I screwed this up. Pick one. I guess they're Jace's Phantasm deck, so we want it. Alright, we're in it. We're in it. I don't know how I screwed that up, but I screwed that up somehow. Yeet. This hand's, this hand's fine. We got an answer for one of their creatures. Apparently they don't have black in their deck. Uh, okay, well, glad. I was going to say, we don't have a discard spell, but now I'm not mad we don't have a discard spell because I don't need no fucking discard spell. Discard spells are for chumps. Push, huh? Uh, I think I want to... Wraith first. Let's Wraith first. Actually, I probably wanted to Wraith after, but whatever. Let's fetch Shog now. Um, I definitely want green. We have Morphos to fix to red. How many red spells do we have in our deck? One, two, three. So we have a lot. I really don't want to grab Stomping Ground because we have a lot of black cards in our hand and I want to be able to push if I need to. So I'm going to grab the Overgrown Tomb and hope we just draw another red source. Um, all right, yep, cool with this. Cool with this turn. We have a push for their other guy and we can... Yeah, we, we already got one of our searches out of the way so we can... Yeah. I was like, I wanted to give them the least draws to Archive Trap possible, but now our Traverse is turned on. Which is nice. How many threats do they mill? One. Oh, they don't have a second land. Explains a lot about their hand. These pushes are kind of bad, but I don't think we're upset about that. So we can traverse for a street wraith, but that kind of sucks. Um... Let's cast... Metamorphose. Make a black and a green. Thoughtseize. So I can traverse and Thoughtseize myself, take Fatal Push, put me to 13. Traversing for what? I don't know. Let's just traverse. How big's Tarmor Blythe? Big. Let's just traverse for a charm of life. Yeet. Um, three Death Shadows. We could tutor a Death Shadow. That doesn't get us blown up by Surgical if that's still in their deck, which it might be. Yeah, let's just take a charm of life. Maybe I should have trophied this ley line and then looked to Thoughtseize them, but I don't want to Thoughtseize a deck with five like with five cards in hand. Plus, like I'm kind of happy with this being a mulligan. So if we Thoughtseize ourselves, take Fatal Push, we can set up to draw a Shock Land that will let us play our Shadow next turn. So we'll Peatland if we draw it. Is that worth revealing what our hand is? We have an extra mana this turn. I think I'm a thought sees myself. Are we just using Morphos fairly? I mean, if you call what we're doing fair, then sure. I don't know that I do, but... This game's playing out really weird. Like, they're missing land drops, which is, like, really strange. Makes you think they might have Fatal Push. Which is part of why I want to turn my other threats on. All right, well, now I can just play both. I don't know if this, have, this has targets, but I'm going to hope it does. It does. All right, good. We need a red source. Um, here's a goofer. This lets us also team our Battle Rage next turn, which is going to be sweet. Here is a Death Shadow. Here is an F6. 
Visions from Beyond draws three cards, fine by me. You can go to nine cards, have land thing next turn, maybe put you back down to seven. Also drawing the archive trap to like do some work. We have a removal spell, we have a team of battle rage. I think we're as well set up as we can be for the moment. We have a push to move a moving a blocker out of the way. You're using it to fix colors. I mean, I'm using it to turn on Delirium is what I'm doing, Shadows. I don't have that many instants in my deck. They hit a land, unsurprisingly. Question is, what do they have to catch up here? I'm halfway dead on mill alone because they milled me for 13 cards. But something like Mesmeric Orb is going to be too slow from this point because they have 8 power in play. So we will see what they decide to do. I'm most scared of like a bunch of Jace's Phantasms, I think, just because they can kill me so quick. Like if they went Jace's Phantasm, Jace's Phantasm, like I'd be happy to just like kill both of those. I guess one argument for trophying the Ley Line of Sanctity too is that it grows the Charm Life by power. If we draw a discard spell, I bet, all right, sure, clean up. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a real good one. Sure. Let's see if we can hit a Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize. Traverse? Woof! Ha! All right. Let's hit them for 10. Attack for 10. I'm going to hold this teamer battle rage until it's lethal for sure. What is this? Drown in the lock, maybe? Oh, I called it. I'm so good. All right. So we can not care about that. All right. Take your hit. For five. Surgical Death Shadow. Okay. Well, thankfully we can traverse for the last storm of life. So... That's nice. <laughs> It'll still put a 5 6 in play. And they're going to go to 13. So if they take a single point, then we can just trophy the, the ley line and they'll die to the two Tarmogoyfs. Drown in the Lock is an interesting pickup for them. I mean, obviously, it would have been better as a fatal push. Drake, I didn't know they had Ross and Mariam Avatar at MTGO. What's that? What is the Ross and Mariam Avatar? Alright, let's spin a green, cast traverse. Go grab the last Tarmogoyf. Tarmogoofer. Goofer. You lost me. Yeah, same. That's his face, so there's no Rex Sage in the deck. Fair. That's nice. The big brain. The galaxy brain entity. Poor Ross. Still still did better than me with Titan Shift in that weekend. Visions. You got it, buddy. Yeah, if they take a point, I think they just die, right? Yeah, if they take a single point of damage, we just, like, trophy their ley line. And then, like, they die. Which is pretty nice. Other than that, right now we're a little susceptible to like a removal spell. So like obviously they're dead to the team of battle rage, right? But like I'm imagining that if they have a hundred thousand cards in their hand and no lands, that they have some kind of answer for a creature. I would not be shocked to see us kind of actually behind in this game, but we'll see. I feel like I'm I'm definitely in a good position on board. If we draw a land, then a removal spell doesn't really help them because we can trophy the ley line and then like, ugh, puke. It's so gross. It's so gross. Peatlet. Why would you have the land? Uh, combat. Attack. Sure, go. Pass priority. What is this? Snapcaster Mage. Uh, 
Gross. So we push that battle rage, kill them. Okay. Oh, they just conceded. I guess they knew I had push plus battle rage, so it just didn't do them any good. Okay, well, we beat Mill for the first time in my existence. We have successfully beaten the Mill deck. Still somehow won that game, wowza. I mean, we were, we were ahead on board. I'm shocked that they didn't have removal spells. I mean, I guess if they had a bunch of snapcasters in their hand, like trying to snap... Oh, Ross? Yeah, 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 I mean... He was extremely far ahead. He had like a Titan and stuff. Colossal Dreadmoth. Busted. <laughs> what do you mean? That game we were crushing. QB Turtle 15. You yeah, the 15th QB Turtle. This hand appears to function, and I will happily keep. The Plague Engineer looks a little awkward if this isn't a matchup where it's good, but it's all right. Ooh, that could be good. I think that Collagon's Command is going to be good at grinding. And I think if my opponent's going Polluted Delta Go, that they're interested in... What the fuck? <laughs> ah, how many times do I have to play against this? Okay, I've collected myself again. What the fuck, chat? What, what the shit? Where did I sign up for this? I don't remember signing up for this. I guess we take Drown. The Cryptic Command's a thousand mana. Go. You know I'm zero percent to beat whatever deck my opponent plays in my win it in. That's fair. I don't know how like winning the finals of an open has been impossible for me. I've played three finals. I won one of them, but all of them have been bad matchups for me for whatever I was playing. All right, what can we do? We can fetch Shock. Throw an instant in the yard. Hope to draw something that allows me to traverse for a shadow. Doesn't feel good. <laughs> it feels like what we're doing. Play of Tarn. Fetch. Oh shit, this is that garbage flash deck. I mean, we're probably going to die to it. With Gear Hulk? What the fuck? Why do they have Gear Hulk? Ah! Shock. Green, black. Or whatever the colors are, this thing. We're going to make a black and a green with this to try to draw a Street Wraith black or a Mistress Bubble green. Shadow. Fuck. Galaxy Brain chat. We can just throw the shadow in the graveyard. It's busted. All right, fine. This Traverse is probably going to grab a tracker then, huh? How do they get the card back? They should control three more other islands. Sure. Ah, they're Grixis. Naturally, they're Grixis. Play to field. We know three of the cards in their hand. Another Shockland. A. Okay. So they have Cryptic Online as early as next turn. I imagine they have approximately 500 answers to a Death Shadow. Give or take about 100. They have a seven mana spell. What's seven mana? To draw cards in a format with Urza's Tower? That does seem rather silly. Uh, why are you blowing my land up? Whatever. I guess we'll float green. Okay, we'll spook them. They have green land in hand. I don't really care that much. They're gonna cut me off green, chat. I'm not gonna have any green. I have green. How do I do it? They have a black land. Okay. So they can play Mystic Sanctuary untapped, right? Nope. Not untapped. Not untapped yet. Of course not. That would make too much sense. Oh, 
what are you doing? Another Death Shadow A. Shock. All right, let's just go ahead and hit him for the old five skis. Five, 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 five. Are we tapping? We should tap. You should tap. Okay. Do I let them two for one me? I kind of want to deploy this traverse. Maybe I just play the Death Shadow. I don't know. What do I want to do? They have four drowns and pushes too. Perfect. Uh, maybe I'll just throw this Plague Engineer away. It's actually kind of what I'm feeling. It's just like throw this Plague Engineer in the trash can. Because like they probably have a single answer. It feels kind of silly though. Maybe I'll just play a single Death Shadow and let them Cryptic. Death Shadow. Just because we can undo the Cryptic with uh, the... Yeah, it's fine. Red, black, one. Target player discards a card, return a creature. Return this creature, make it discard a card. Like, we can basically trade commands with them. Oh, shit! They have Force Negation. That's cute. Okay, I'm actually not upset with that trade then. Because we still got the two for one out of it. And actually, I think the Snapcaster Mage was a way better card than the Death Shadow is in this matchup. So, and we have Traverse to boot. So, I think we're actually okay. I am happy with how that exchange went. Now, if they put like a Nickel Bolas or some dumb shit and like Flame Tongue Kavu, my guy, I feel kind of dumb. Wizard. God, I'd love to Urza's this Tower of this deck. Same. Same. That's okay. I'm shocked they just snapped off that force. I guess they can put Cryptic Command back on top. We're going to hit him for another five. Probably play another creature. Traverse for a creature and play it. Though I'd like to draw a land so I can traverse for... What's it called? Traverse for a tracker. Just played a tap. Tarpit A. Eh? Okay. Thoughtsies. That seems kind of nice. Kind of want to attack first. But it does make it a two turn clock to Thoughtseize first, so I guess we'll do that. Now they're just going to speed their removal spell in Shadow, whereas they may have hold it, held it otherwise. Maybe the attack for five was correct. But. And like the fact they didn't play the Mystic Sanctuary makes me confident they have a removal spell. That's fine. Target Drone in the lock. That's fine. Can I Thoughtseize you, please? Take drone and luck. Plague engineer. This is an elemental. Okay. Drone and luck. Kill that. You got it. Uh, human or wizard? Wizard's probably correct in case they have the Dillion click. Go. So we know they just have Mystic Sanctuary in their hand. They are going to put Cryptic back on top, I imagine. Fortunately, now we're dead to Creeping Tar Pit in two. Although, I suppose that we do have a Fatal Push. That they can't hold up Cryptic around. What they put? They put on Drown and Lock on top? Okay. Traverse. Nothing gains life. Is counter spells? Hmm. This did not pan out my way. Whatever, let's sure see what we have access to. <laughs> so we could grab a Street Wraith and try to hit another removal spell. That's kind of greedy. But I suppose if it's our only out, it's our only out. We'll cold the tarp. Potentially, yeah. Wish I had a bog here where I could bog myself. That'd be nice. Derp, 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 derp. Uh, 
Yeah, to me it looks like I'm supposed to Street Wraith. And then have tried to hit a removal spell and have two removal spells for the tar pit. Drown in the lock. No ghost corner, huh? Okay. Uh, removal spell. Maybe that counts. We're gonna try to bait it out. What is this, a Snapcaster Mage? Oh, it's just a Drown Lock. How many of these do you have? What the fuck? There's one on top of your deck, right? This doesn't return it to your hand? I don't understand how this happened. Whatever. I assume there's now a Drown Lock in your hand. Okay, you went to combat. Interesting. Why is the game playing out like this? Whatever. Um. Black, green, traverse, traverse. Grab a dish shadow. They said dust shadow. <laughs> I don't understand what we're thinking about here. Might make you play your opponent's broken deck. My opponent's deck is far from broken, I'm afraid. We have lethal threat in play, though, which is nice. Okay. Okay. We know about a drown, right? Huh. We're also dead, though. Okay. Hmm. We in fact did die to the creeping tar pit. Makes me want to board in Ghost Quarter. Especially because I'm probably boarding in Hazard. As it does not die to Charming Lock. Um, Plague's here seems really bad. Run and Six seems serviceable. Trophy seems maybe okay. I don't know what to think of Collective Brutality. So, like, this match is going to be kind of hard. Busted! I don't know. I don't know if this is busted. QB Turtle's a very good player. Okay. <laughs> Their deck choice is questionable, but I believe you that they are a good player. Demo Battle Rage. Um, pretty bad. Trying to assess what I think of Assassin's Trophy in this matchup. Like, do we think they have, like, a bunch of walkers that are going to be problematic? Do we want the extra answer to... We probably do, because we probably want to cut, like, all of our pushes, right? We probably just want to, like, cut, like, all of them. And then, like, just bring in the trophies. But maybe that means we want collective brutalities in some number. Yukibi Turtle is very good. Hi, Rudy. How are you? We're playing some Traverse Shadow, trying to figure it out, dying to questionable decks. Looks sweet, though. Drown of Lock's a, an interesting magic card, for sure. Um, trying to figure out if I want any number of brutalities. It's kind of slow. I don't think we're ever doing more than two mana dressing. We already have eight discard spells, so 
I don't think I want it. I think we're just going to run this. They're on the Into the Story list, right? Messi Benito, I have no idea what they're on. I don't know anything about their deck list. It's nothing I've seen before in Modern, and therefore I do not know what's going on. Uh, this hand is really bad. If it had four lands at the end, like three spells, I'd probably keep it, but I don't think I can keep the five lander in Shadow. Nice. Very nice. Well, well, maybe I'm mulligan this too. Did they mull? They at least mulled. All right, we're in shape. Hey, a keepable hand. This is just a good old Jund hand too. We're going to put the Ghost Quarter and the Peatland on bottom, I think. The Peatland may be a little bit better, but... Actually, yeah, I think we'll keep the Peatland around. My opponent is in the tank about their second seven. Yes, it's trophied already. I would not be surprised if this deck was bad, nor would I be surprised if QB 5 0s. Yeah, just a good, good uh, bad decks in good players' hands, right? I mean, I don't know. It's got some interesting aspects. Like the forces, like it's basically all of these like blue fair decks got a lot better with Force Negations Edition to Modern. So like, there's going to be some more consideration that should be given to it from before. All right, we're going to keep this, and we're going to put the Ghost Quarter, either the Peatland, or the Inquis or I'm sorry, or the <coughs> Fetchland. I'm inclined to believe the Peatland's going to be better in case we draw a Ren and Six, so I'm going to hold on to the Peatland. Eat. That Shock, yes. Black Inquisition, you. Pushes, drown the locks, not functional mana. Um, so I'll take the engineered explosives, make them trade one for one with both of these Charmoglyphs. Also make them bigger. This is kind of slow. What does this do? Enters tapped. <laughs> Maybe drown the locks the better card. Nah, I think E is the better card. So they don't have an untapped black source on turn one. I don't know how this, they have room for this Fetid Pools in their deck. It's very interesting. Why is it every time I thought he's an opponent, they have two Fatal Pushes? How has this happened to me? Everybody's doing the Fatal Push thing. Want the list, Drake? I am good. We're going to figure it out as we go. Instead of trying to look at it in the middle. We're going to we're gonna figure out what's going on like I would if I was playing a real tournament. Yeet. Ren six. Ain't it, Chief? Whatever. Black. Actually, this was incorrect sequencing, too. So loose, Drake. So loose. Should be fetch shocking. So, they played the fetid pools. They now have push, push, shroud, snow-covered mountain. Hopefully they did not draw a second black source, so their next two turns are priced into being Tarmogoyf, like push Tarmogoyf, push Tarmogoyf, which gives me an opening to draw to a Red and Six and start getting that engine going, which would be really nice. Is this destroyed just target permanent? Target creature, thank god. Oh my god, no! That's still thing. Okay, um... I wonder if there's merit to trying to draw to a discard spell. They have two pushes, so probably not. Like, one discard spell just isn't enough. Take the hit. Yay. They did it. They want to hold up Drown. Smart. Smart. Goofer. Push the first goofer. First goofer pushed. Here you go. Here is a second goofer. Okay. Now they can push the other goofer. And then the board's clear. And they can hold up drone. 
which is good against Traverse. Um, I think I'm fine drawing another shock land, so I'm not going to crack it. Death Shadow, huh? Fetch. Shock 8. Overgrown Tomb in. Um, let's make a black and play a Death Shadow. Um, how many sweepers are we going to put them on, you think? I don't know. We need to find one of our other ways to... Oh, we thought scaring me? Thank God. This Traverse was not online. In the middle of running six! Yay! Bless up, chat. In the middle of running six. This indicates a Snapcaster to me. Probably going to blow up my Nurturing Peatland. Okay. Like... Tag for two. That attack first before doing this might be questionable, but spell snare, huh? All right, well, I got punished for not grabbing a forest for sure. Although I don't think I would want a forest because I probably. You know, maybe I do want a forest. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Not super relevant for the time being. We have two cards left. We know both of them. It's Snow Covered Mountain and Drown in the Lock, which is why they're so hesitant to kill the Shadow, because the Shadow doesn't have enough life. Like, it doesn't have enough. Yeah. Doesn't ha is not large enough to really pose enough of a threat for them to justify killing it for the time being. Nurturing Peatland is a good draw. Um, what do I do here? We probably attack first, right? Yeah, let's just traverse. The sequencing on this turn is not clear to me. So we can grab another shadow, but I think I want to grab Tarmogoyf. <laughs> Could grab Hazard, the Fervent. That's kind of sexy. I'm kind of in. Talk me out of that, Jet. What the fuck? I kind of want. No, I kind of want to play the threat this turn. Hmm. What do? What do? What do? Scrub Tower Wife. And we'll play it. Get it drowned so we can attack for three. They have cryptic command, that's kind of a beating. But it would require that to be their other unknown card. If they don't have cryptic command, there's no reason not to just hold the drown in the lock. Like I have no cards in hand, they have two cards in hand. So there's no reason not to just hold the drown. They have Snapcaster. Snapping Snare seems fine because they can Snap Snare, drown my other creature, and then we're at parity and they get the first draw step at parity, which favors them, I think. So I don't think they have Snapcaster Mage or they wouldn't be thinking this long. I think that probably their only piece of interaction is Drown. They don't have Cryptic or I think this is a slam dunk. Nine. I can't do anything else, so I'm playing heads up. What is this? What the fuck is that? 
Opponent has seven more cards. Oh, it just draws four cards, so we just died? Okay. That's pretty good. Don't think we're beating that one. Stupid me for trying to play fair in modern A. Um, let's not get blown out in combat, so let's do this. They're going to drown at least one of my creatures and probably do something else. It's dead. Can I see your other four cards, please? Oh. Okay. Um. Let's just hit them for four, put lethal in play so they have to use their cryptic, like, non-favorably. They could bounce it, too, which I'm also cool with. That's cute. So this means they're drawing to a push. Cool. Dead. We're not beating the 500... The stream of 500 cards. Man, what are these decks we've played against? Played against Mill, Grixis, Stuff, and... What was even the first deck? I don't even remember. We got clapped by it. Oh, like, Black, White, Smallpox. Feels like people really out here not liking Shadows. Everybody's everybody's had some Drown in the Locks or Pushes in their deck. I feel like... I feel like... The sample size has been bad, but so far our deck has felt very beatable by Fatal Push backed by some other things. This is awkward. I guess we keep this. We want to, because we want to Thoughtseize on turn one, we want to bobble them first so we get a little bit more information. So let's bobble them. Urza's mine. It's Tron. Puke. Let's fetch and shock in this Blood Crypt. And before we Thoughtseize, let's also target ourselves so we have information on what we're drawing. Another Blood State Mire. That helps. Alright, so we know there's an Urza's mine coming. They already have an Urza's mine. And they have a bunch of eggs. Um, I think, oh, I wanted this. Dang, I guess we should save this. Uh, just like pictures, pictures. What's the play? Save. Okay, boop. Boop. Well, they're not drawing a Tron piece that matters. We could take their payoff and make them have to find the land plus payoff because they have three eggs. That's moderately attractive to me. But... I don't know. Maybe we take the payoff piece. Because we're going to take at least an egg. We take an egg plus payoff. Let's just take the payoff piece. And we can make decisions. More decisions next turn. Because we have a Bloodstained Mire coming. And we have another card coming. Oh, it's reverse. Well, we do not have Delirium yet. They play an egg. So do we want to Thought Seize them to take their other egg? We don't have to. We can wait a turn. And I want to wait a turn, I think. Is that Mad Wizard? Dominic Harvey. What's up, Dominic? Well, I never get a heart. Dom loves me so much more. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna like play this a little slow. Fetch shock. Play our shadow as a one one. Although if they draw ballista, I feel like a five head. Do I want to play around them drawing specifically ballista? <sighs> Probably do. The shadow's really important, but taking an egg is really low equity. Ugh. Fine, here's a shadow. Ugh. I'm gonna thought seize just to play around it. 
This feels really bad. Medic star. I'll take the star. Okay, go. So we know four of their five cards. Hopefully they miss for a turn or two, and we can get something started here. All right. Okay. Map's a good one. They still don't have payoff that we know about. Push. Well, I wish I had a way to discard this. Hmm. So we can either pump this up by like losing life or hmm, we can just draw a card. Maybe if we draw like a discard spell, it's like really good. We've been through two, but I feel like All right, this way actually, if we draw Street Wraith, we're in great shape. Ugh, bubble baby. Let's cast the bubble. Um, do you? What is it? An oblivion stone. Ew. All right, I think we're dead. I think we are sufficiently dead. Because that counts as a payoff piece. I don't really know why I screwed this game up. Maybe playing around Ballista was too greedy. Like... I thought these preemptively, knowing that I was going to. Ugh. Well, I mean, we're drawing to a discard spell again. Whew! That is a lot of lands. Okay. Anyway, knowing that I was going to. No, that's a lot of mana. They drew the second Ugin. Okay. Tilt. Play the shadow. I don't know. Like, yeah, maybe I was just supposed to hold it and not play around Ballista, but it felt free to do. Like, I didn't think their hand was going to improve drastically off the two redraws. I mean, maybe. I mean, it's going to improve, but I didn't think it would improve drastically, but maybe that's more likely than me dying to a Ballista there. So, maybe I just shouldn't have played around it, and that was greedy to do. I think I'm going to bring in Ren and Six, just because we can traverse this Ghost Quarter, and I think this is, like, part of our plan. Like, Crucible plus Ghost Quarter is a hell of a combo. So, I think I'm going to do that. I think I also want Plague Engineer. Trophy's definitely worth having. Hazard it seems a little greedy. Tyler's Tracker depresses me. Plague Engineer depresses me. Fatal Push also depresses me. So, let's get all that crap out. And I guess that lines up pretty cleanly. Yeet. <laughs> Yep, I like all these cards. Oh, I think you want oof. That's probably a good point. Oh, no, it's too late. Eh, that's probably a good point. We can cut something for oof. I just didn't think oof was going to be that good, but it's actually very good on the play. It's much worse than the draw. Yeah, I'll keep this. The trophy to blow up a Tron land is attractive. Plus, we have, like, a discard spell and a street wraith. I don't think we can ask for too much more. Ooh, a death shadow. Well, we could ask for more, and we would have gotten it. Yeet. Relic. Expedition map. Lame. Well, my hand does the Death Shadow thing. So, I feel incentivized to just ignore this Relic and just do the Death Shadow thing. But maybe, just maybe... We don't care, and we're going to try to trophy them instead. Like, make them spend their mana and their time doing stuff just to trophy them. That might be attractive. That might be attractive. Do we try to plan to win by trophying them and stranding all this payoff, or do we take the map? I think I'm going to take this map. This relic is going to line up pretty well against us, though, but we do have this Death Shadow Hand. Man, oof would be great, huh? Oof would be very good. Oh, no. Like, Matt makes them find another piece. Like, if all they're doing is Relic, I feel like we're going to win this game. 
And then we have we have the trophy backup. I'm gonna try to ignore the relic. This is like serious disrespect for relic, but I'm gonna try to ignore it and hopefully I don't get punished for it. Yep, that's fine. Hey FG F G C Kratos, thank you much for the follow, I really appreciate it. Um let's get rid of Sorcery's probably the hardest to get. Shock fetch land. Oh jeez. Of course I naturally draw a Tarbogoyf immediately after. Ah Alright. Black, green. Green. Here's a metamorphose. Gonna make a black and a green here. Okay. Cycle Street Wraith. Okay. Here's Dumb Wife. You don't hate to see that. You don't hate to see that. It's not bad. It's not bad. Star. Sounds good to me. I have an extra Street Wraith Exile. Cool by me. Assassin's Trophy. Yes. Um, let's just attack for three. Yeah, attack for three. Okay. This is going to make it zero. So we could trophy a Tron land now. We don't know about any other lands in their hand. We know about three payoff pieces that are really bad for us if they draw them. So we could trophy something now. And then play our Death Shadow and try to use that. Because we, we have a backup trophy. Let's trophy the power plant. I actually think I want to do this. This is a little aggressive and I'm only doing it because I have a backup trophy. This does give them green mana, but they have it anyway because of the star. So the fact they have star plus the fact that I'm really scared of them just having the natural Tron source and like three like draw steps makes me want to do this. Plus I get to hit for any amount of damage right now. And I'm going to like want to blow up a Tron land later anyway. So I'm going to make this play knowing that it is slightly questionable. All right. Black. Here's a Death Shadow. 4-4 four, four Death Shadow. This gets the clock moving. We're going to do this thing. Hey, they did, they did draw the mine. That's disgusting. We're going to go to our power plant. Okay. And then we're going to blow up this mine. Oh, Metamorphos is a good draw, too. Um, I don't see any downside to playing this land. Oh, that's Metamorphos. <laughs> hey, Butter, thanks for the resub. Twitch is just reminding me of how much money I throw at you. Thank you much for your support. Oh my gosh, the sub badges are going to be coming soon. Uh, Inklin's been working on the other Nova tokens, and so she got a little little delayed on giving our stuff out but it should be out soon and i'm really excited for it and i really wanted to come past here and i'm trying to be patient and i'm failing at it all right um let's make a black and let's make a green inquisition huh hmm don't make me tap this kind of interested in tapping this anyway sure let's inquisition them oh they have a power plant in hand and that's it so let's make a black and let's trophy this Tron land. And this hits them for 10 and they're dead in two before they can play anything. Sounds good to me. Attack. All right, they don't want to play no more. Die. Okay, that game was more stressful than it needed to be. Collector roof, put it in the deck. It's going to be great. Metamorphos seems kind of slow and I kind of hate it. So I'm going to cut one. Yeet. Let's do it. Run it back. Got him. Yeah, those tokens are hot. Sub badge hype. Yeah, there's also like she's also gonna be redoing the emotes and stuff like that. I'm throwing a lot of money at Inklin, Rudy. Throwing a lot of money at our sponsor. 
to redo a bunch of, or I guess initially do, because like most of it's not done, do a bunch of the stream stuff, which is going to be exciting for streaming next year. God Trophy is nuts. I agree with you, Shadows. Well, we have our best drawn hate in our deck, aka Team or Battle Rage. We got a goofer. I don't know. We should have all the things. This hand's great. I'm keeping this hand. This hand's awesome. And they're mulling to five? Let me tell you what's good against a mull to five. Although, being on a play would be better because we could take the map. The fact we can't take the map is kind of a punt. Why do you have Graveyard Hate in against Drawn? Oh, <laughs> Battle Rage is Graveyard Hate. Nice meme. Uh, all right. Well, we drew a land. I don't think I'm wraithing for anything. I think I can wraith for Bobble here, actually. Let's wraith for Bobble. Ugh. Another Tarma Goofer. Um. Okay. Let's fetch Shock of Blood Crypt. Yes. Let's Inquisition our lovely Tron opponent here. Let's whiff. They have Tron, though. We are witnessing them having Tron. Which is frustrating because it means I have to trophy on turn two. I can't believe we whiffed. What a punt. What a punt. Ancient stirrings. You got it, bud. Another worm coil. I get it. You have a worm coil. Being on the draw is a punt, correct. Well, I mean. We want them to draw a forest, so we do this on their draw step. I guess we should metamorphose into it, too, to put instant in our yard. We can do that whenever, I guess. So if we draw a bobble, it's fine. Okay. All right. Trophy. Power plant powers the whole operation, so we'll blow that one up. All right. Tower. Looks good to me. So they have two worm coils and assorted other bullshit. Um, I don't see any reason not to play this swamp. Swamp, black, red. Let's make... A black and a green and play a goofer. This way we have them dead in two turns. Put them to 15. Yeah, we have them dead in two turns. So that's pretty quick. And if we can somehow get another type in the graveyard, then we can kill them faster, which would be nice. No green cards? Okay. They're getting close to hard casting, so this whole dead and two plan really needs to come together. Street Wraith. There's no creature in the yard, right? That pumps this up by a clock? By a turn? Oh, no, it doesn't. Alright. Fetch. Shock this land in. Um, here's a goofer. Um, land are we going to pick up? Are we going to pick up a land? We probably will. Because we can just double battle rage next turn. And if they do cast a worm coil next turn, we can deal one to it with Ren and then like tri uh, double strike over it. So that's pretty attractive. Let's play our Ren. Uh, minusing versus plusing doesn't appear to have any upside at all. So I'm just gonna... What if they have one removal spell, then the minus is better? Alright, we're gonna minus on them. The The card just doesn't seem to matter to me at all, and I don't think we're gonna need the mana at all. The way we get punished is if they somehow cast a Worm Quill this turn, we have to minus on it, and we draw one drop that we want to cast. That is how we get punished. You can double Battle Rage, so busted. <laughs> yes, no kidding. All right, we need them to whiff on the Tron land here. Oblivion Stone doesn't do anything without the Tron land. Okay, yeah, they're dead. Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. Oh yeah, let's just let's just let's just show them what's up. Yeet. Yeah. 
58. This one, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. More of them. More! Ugh, take 20. Die. It's land hate, too. See? It's land hate. All right. We got the two and two. We got the good, the nice, even record. Playing against reasonable decks. Beebs, thanks for the uh, the prime. I really appreciate it. How you doing, buddy? Am I gonna be seeing you in Philly? If you have a sub list for me to play this month, get the uh, the Discord and submit that. The old Beebs. Hey Blitz, how's it going? Quadruple strike. Got him. This hand does complicated bobble plus street wraith things. Okay, it's not that complicated because we don't have a fetch land. I will be in Philly. Ooh, who's your team? Who's your team of professionals? Kentis Maximus. All right, there's just no universe where we can keep this, right? So let's just keep this. Secrets? Your team is a secret. Is your team broken? Long time no security. Ooh, it's a Brett. Hey, we got the bobble thing going. But we don't want to do it, right? Because we have uh, Inquisition. Chad, how do you sequence this? Chad, I'm gonna botch this really bad. This is this see, this is the part that makes me like Monka S when it comes to this shadow deck. Is this kind of crap right here? I think it is broken, but some people will disagree. Drake, you're playing with. I am playing with Harlan Fuhrer and Zach Allen. Bobble them first. Okay, so we're gonna bobble them first for sure before discarding. But are we playing this? Are we playing this nurturing peatland, knowing we want to discard, so we don't want to wait for bobble. And so we just hold the street rates too, right? But Street Wraiths could inform what I care about with my discard spell. So I kind of want to spew the Street Wraiths. So like I want to spew the Street Wraiths to better inform the discard spell. Bobble you if you don't want it. Fetch. Oh, okay. So we're going to bobble me, bobble them. Drake your team is so smart and thin except Zach's dad bod. You bobble you. All right, all right, all right. Chat, come down. All right, fine. See, this is what I'm talking about. All right. So let's let's cast the bobble. We're gonna make a decision on this on this bobble. Bobble me. Team or battle rage. I think we probably want team or battle rage against Aaron and Mesa, unless it's like Jeskai. If it's burn, we don't want it, right? They have a fetch in play. Well, what does that matter? I guess bobbling, I guess you're right, bobbling them is not good. I think I need to find out if this is burned before we just fire off these street wraiths, right? Bobble them on their upkeep. Yes, yeah, cycle now. Bobbling them informs my decision. Well, it won't inform my decision if they have a mesa in play and want to do something, right? Like, I assume they're going to fetch. So, chat's right about that. So we should now, I think we want to just cycle Street Wraith, bobble myself again. I'll bobble them for info to see if you want TBR. Okay, I'll buy that argument. I'll buy that argument. That's a good argument. You're so smart, 3Deuce. You're so smart. Why don't you just be like another Aaron Mesa? Sun Titan? What the fuck? <laughs> oh, chat help. We have a Sun Titan. Okay, that makes me think we don't want TBR, because Sun Titan probably means path to exile. You said that. Okay, you're so smart, Rudy. You're so smart. This No, that, that does tell us something. That means A, they're not burn. B, that means they're probably a path to exile deck. They're probably playing Emiria, so that means we don't want TBR, which means we want to fetch. Shock this Blood Crypt. And then do we just Street Wraith? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> uh, how long do I hold these? Wraith AF. All right, let's Wraith. Let's just Wraith a bunch. Let's figure out what these cards are. Inquisition. We take those. Spew, 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 spew. The second Inquisition's nice. Knowing we can, we can take a second card is actually very helpful. All right, they have another Sun Titan, obviously, because, you know, this is a multiple Sun Titan strategy. 
What is with it tonight? What is in the water in these moto leagues? I swear. Chad, help. Okay. Charming Prince can't make me gain life. Flicker Wisp is obnoxious. They have more Flicker Wisp effects. I guess other Flicker Wisp effects just kind of suck if we just take the Wall of Omens, right? So let's just take the Wall of Omens. They play Charming Prince. We Inquisition this Flicker Wisp. I'm in. I'm in. All right. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're playing against Solar Flare of some kind. Take wall. Good call. Hey, Ryan. How are you? Oh, we also are drawing two more cards. I forgot about that. Well, that push is actually pretty nice. They drew the second Sun Titan. So we know that they have Sun Titan number two in their hand. Obviously a very good magic card. We picked up a Death Shadow, which is a hell of a pickup. All right, so we're gonna get. They're gonna play Charming Prince. We're gonna discard their Flicker Wisp and play Death Shadow. I imagine they're gonna Scry too. Yeah, it feels like that makes sense. All right, well, hand got a lot better when we added two more cards to it, which is nice. What did they do? They leave them both on top. Two cards on bottom. You got it. Do we have? We have Delirium Chat. We have Delirium. We could play the Goofer, but I want to discard their Sun Titan, I think. Not Sun Titan, I can't discard that. I want to discard the stupid Flicker Wisp because it attacks for a lot. So, I am going to play this Nurturing Peatland. I'm going to take a point of damage and I'm going to Inquisition them. And hopefully take a Path to Exile. Oh, wait, no, they don't have one. We know that. Yeet, 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 yeet. And then we're going to play our 1-1 one, one Death Shadow. And then next turn, we can Tarmogoyf, Fatal Push. And then the turn after that, we can Traverse for whatever the hell we want. Which is pretty nice. At, at which point, we'll have better information on what they've drawn. Like, if they draw another Flicker Wisp, we probably want Plague Engineer. If they're getting closer to Sun Titan, we probably want an answer to that. They didn't play Marsh Flats, so they at least have land number four for Sun Titan. If they start Sun Titaning us, we're probably in a lot of trouble. I think they're considering Field of Ruining my Nurturing Peatland before I untap, which I'm cool with. Yeah, that's fine by me. Think I want green? Yeah, I definitely want green. Same with Black Wind in it. Okay. Verdant Catacombs was a hell of a pickup. Let's... Go to combat and attack. We're just pushing this. I'm just pushing this. Yeah, we're just pushing this. Move this out of my way. There's no reason to let them keep that in play at all, I don't think. We have another green source in hand, so let's just... We don't, there's no double green on our deck. I'm just going to grab the other blood grip so they can't cut us off red. Black. Cast. Move. Move, please. Goodbye. Here's a goofer. Hit you for a million. Here's a hundred. All right, I think we have them dead in three, which is nice. If we draw a team or battle rage, we are a point short. No, we have them dead next turn if we draw a team or battle rage. Damn it, now I want team or battle rage. <laughs> Amiria, three planes, you need seven, deal. You would die long before that happens. So don't Wrath of God me. They're out is like Wrath of God. Uh. Do we just grab, like, a tireless tracker or something? I don't know, chat. I want something to rebuild, so I guess I'll just grab a shadow. Maybe that sucks. If they... Like, okay, so, like, this card I'm taking in case they Wrath of God me, because I have them dead in two currently. They can't play Sun Titan yet. So it's between Shadow and... Uh, tireless Tracker... Just get a Street Wraith? That doesn't kill them, though. I don't like that. Maybe that's good, though. It might. All right, you're right. We're drawing We're drawing to Team of Battle Rage, which is a kill. Fine, we'll go for it. We'll try it. Team of Battle Rage. Tarma Goofer. All right, well, that's fine, actually. We take those. And K-Command. That's true. K-Command does kill them. 
In before wing shards? Sure. I mean, I know they're ha they don't have it. Hey, Enlighten Master, how are you? Alright, here you go. Take 100. I'm gonna try not to get Wrath of Godded and hold this goofer. Is that stupid? Why does that feel stupid? Holding the goofer. Maybe it's not stupid. If they draw Charming Prince, they're not dead. Okay. What's more likely? Do you, do we think they have Wrath of God in this deck? How often does Amiria have Wrath of God? Because, like, if they draw Charming Prince, they can just gain three, and then they're not dead. And I want them to be dead, because if they don't die, they start casting Sun Titans, and that's bad. They're like a 400 Wrath deck. All right, fine, 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 fine. We will pass. We'll just pass and hope they miss. The thing is, I'm going to feel really dumb if they draw a Charming Prince. It's a Raven Inspector. Or any blocker at all. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. That, that card is fine. They have to crack it, draw a card, draw another one drop. No, they can draw a two drop, right? They didn't play the land yet? Yeah. Yay, we won! We're so talented! We beat the Questionables deck. Is Graveyard good against this deck? I need to figure that out before we, like, move on. Turn to our creature card from Graveyard to the battlefield. It's like some just ATB effect. Where's a Takatli Honor Guard when you need one? This is indestructible. It seems stupid to bring it against this path deck, but it's indestructible. That's good, right? Running six with Ghost Quarter might be a thing we want to do. Yixla Jailer seems attractive-ish. No, it doesn't. Right, that doesn't shut down Amiria. Never mind, I'm a five head. Um, all my cards suck. What, what do? All my cards are bad. Uh, this doesn't kill Charming Prince, doesn't kill Wall, doesn't kill anything is bad. It kills Flicker Wisp. Whew. Ren is good versus their X ones. Yeah, I mean, we probably want Ren more than we want, like, Plague Engineer, right? Like, we don't want this card. We probably want Trophy, too, I bet. And probably Call Guns Commands. All right, that's, like, a reasonable number of cards. Ghost Quarter kills Emiria's. Is that good enough? Is that actually good enough? Our cyber cards are really bad because our opponent's deck sucks. Ryan, look, let me tell you about my league, buddy. Let me tell you about my league, okay? Oh, Ghost quarter loop against the mono white deck. Magic's so stupid. Dude, we're in it. All right, I don't want Team or Battle Rage against the Wrath deck. Even though I do feel like I'm the aggressor in this matchup, like they're going to win the long game, I don't think we can afford to have Team or Battle Rage in our deck when they have Wrath and Paths. Um, Tire Striker seems attractive. Golly, what else do I want to cut? How much time do I have? Plenty. <laughs> How good is Fatal Push? Because, like, all their creatures have ETB value, but I need to move them the fuck out the way. I'm going to cut, like, two pushes. Um, time's ticking. Me, no, me, no. No way all this is good. If he didn't bring in three rings, I'd bring in like two. Does that suck? It feels like that sucks. Rain just doesn't seem that good. I think I'm down for the land because we need to cast Hazard. Trim Morphos? Sure, we'll trim a Morphos. Is there no need for Morphos when your instant speed removal is live? Yeah, we still don't have that much of it though. Maybe we'll run. We don't want Ren over more foes. All right, we'll try this. I like Ren. Ren's busted. I don't want to play more with Ren in modern, so we're going to do it. But Ren, I think there's a chance we're only supposed to have two Rens in this deck. Heard we can't beat Drown in the Rock? That is quite accurate, Ryan. We are dead. Stone dead to Drown in the Lock. Taught me out of keeping this hand because I really want to keep it. This hand fucking sucks, but I really want to keep it. Chat, you have like 30 seconds to talk me out of keeping this hand. Actually, that's way too long. You probably have like 10 seconds. Keep it. Beep says keep it. I mean, I mean, Beep said keep it. You have four lands. <laughs> Look, I am a man with a plan here. My plan is to draw cards with my cards. They could be anything. And then have Ren and Six. This is all busted. We could draw two lands. No, we can't because we have Bobble to inform it. We have, info we have inform it. You can cast a 3-4. Snap keep. Snap keep. Chat talked me into it instead of out of it. It's a snap keep. Oh, right, yeah, I don't care about that. Who said they had X ones? This is a one two. This is bullshit. <laughs> Watch discard spell right here. <laughs> ah! Too easy.
easy, chat. Too easy. All right, we're, we're too dead if we don't hit a spell, so I'm actually going to bobble myself instead of them. Is that a spell? Oh, that is a spell. That's a that's a nice spell, too. Daddy-like. Daddy-like. All right. Um... Let's just, like, grab it and fetch and shock so, like, we're less likely to draw lands for the rest of this game. Kind of in. I'm in. We're doing it. We're going to grab the last blood crypt. The last blood crypt. Already out of shock lands because my deck is powerful. Inquisition you. Take the good ones. Charming Prince, Wall of Omens, Wrath of God. So a lot of their cards don't do a whole lot here. Eight. I haven't actually referred to any of these snips yet, but there's a chance I need them. We're, we're, the, our thought season, I think, is pretty priced into taking Wrath of God. But I also want to mitigate the pressure from our Ren and Six because that's kind of our plan right now. So, part of me wants to ignore this path to exile. Thought sees the wrath of God. And maybe I could just like hope to draw like some kind of creature that stands in the way of all this shit. And maybe that's like fine. So much value. Let's just take let's just take the, the path to exile, actually. Like, I, I think I'm going to tr try to plan to draw a creature instead. Just, like, plan to draw a creature that's going to block for my Ren and Six. Hazoret! Alright, well, now I'm glad I took the path. <laughs> so we have a Hazoret on curve, Chet. On curve. And they played a wall, so our Ren isn't even pressured anyway. So we can just, like, hold off. Just, like, take our one. Like, play our Ren. Thoughts ease them. Then we have, like, Ren and Six. I don't know. Assassin's Trophy? That's that's attractive, too. Look at this. Everything's coming together. Everything's coming together. Nice, wrath, idiot. Yeah, we got to hazard it. All right, let's just shock green. Here's a Ren. Let's plus up said Ren. Target Verdant Catacombs. Look at that. We drew a card. We drew a card, chat. We drew a card. Busted. Busted! Take all the lands out of our deck. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Everyone's gonna talk about how great it is. That's how great it is. And we can fetch and find a ghost quarter. And start ghost quartering them. Just run them out of basics. Are they hitting Ren? Don't hit Ren. Your child. What the fuck? Yup. Flicker Wall of Omens. How many lands did they have? They had an Arid Mesa we know about. So we know two of their cards. We know they have Aaron Mesa, Wrath of God. And they're going to... Oh, no, they played the Aaron Mesa. Never mind. We only know Wrath of God. Okay. Traverse. Come to Papa. All right. Uh, so we could Traverse for a Nurturing Peatland. Because I don't want to Ghost Court of them yet. Let's play our Verdant. Um, let's just fetch. Grab the Swamp. Thought sees them. Oh god, that is so much crap. Remorseful Cleric! Oh god. Okay, what is our plan here? Those are a lot of those are a lot of heaters, but they have no lands. They are distinctly lacking in land drops. This deck has Martyr of Sands in it, right? This is a tough game. Take path traverse for shadow. Maybe the line. Maybe the line. Yeah, let's do that. Take path. That lets me fire the traverse off now. Traverse. Go grab the death shadow. Death shadow. Although, this might be a punt because we could be grabbing Tireless Tracker, but whatever. I want to protect my run. Plus, pick up the Verdant. Go. 
Look at all this card advantage. I actually may not even have wanted to pick up this Verdant just because I have to get it back in the yard to get Delirium again. But whatevs. They can't play Remorseful Cleric out because I can just force them to crack it with Ren. Third land was a good pickup. Third land was a very good pickup. Cleric doesn't matter once we traverse. The other creatures don't matter. Wrath will matter eventually, but we have has daddy. Yeah, big father has. Actually, that's another good reason not to pick up this land. Holy shit. Forgot about has daddy. Or five heads. Just move my creature out the way, hit my rim. Okay, no. Oh, you can't even move my creature out the way because that's how the card works. Okay, they're in for the long haul. Sure, it comes back, you draw a card. Sounds good to me. My turn. Catacombs. Yeah, it's going to be so hard to get these lands out of my hand. Although maybe, maybe that's just like fine. We're just going to like... Here's a has daddy. Maybe we're just going to like play six lands out and just pitch them. Just continually pitch them. That actually means we need to decide whether or not we're picking up this land, like, right now. Do I want Has Daddy to, like, start attacking? Also, we can just, like, pick up lands like we're working towards the Ren ult. Pick it up. Alright, we're picking it up. I'm in. I'm in. Are we attacking? I don't think we are. I think we want to hold down the Ren Fort here. I think we want to hold down the Ren Fort. Because the Ren is how we're, like, keeping up with them on cards. And we're pressuring, like, we're threatening to ult. Which is really nice. Four mana. Wrath of, Wrath of Godding is bad for them now. Remorseful Cleric is fine. We're just going to shoot that with a Ren. Alright, yep. Which does require us to downtick Ren, but that's fine. Draw an Inquisition. They have Ranger Captain. We're pretty in for taking that. Ranger Captain, Arid Mesa, Wrath of God. Minus, pick that off. I guess I should have picked that off first. But, uh, yeah, it only matters for Charmed Voice. It only matters for Charmed Voice. Alright. Okay. We'll put this land in tapped. And then we'll pass. And crap clue on end step. Wrath of God doesn't do a whole lot for them, and we're just gonna pitch a land on end step. To shock them! Powerful plays by Drake Sasser. Okay, so. They drew. They drew that. I guess they didn't play Aaron Mesa for some reason. They, like, start making, like, these aggressive attacks with these big idiots. We're going to, like, Assassin Trophy one, but I don't really see that happening. Discard. Discard. I've already Catacombs. Deal two to you. Inquisition. We know the two cards in hand. Inquisition doesn't do anything. Let's plus up return this. Um, I guess we just shock to six. Shock to six. Yeah, I'm doing it. We have a seven, seven. I can't get down to one or fewer cards. They can attack with everybody. This might leave me dead to a removal spell. No, I have, I have a Sasha Trophy. It doesn't leave me dead to a removal spell. Okay. No path, daddy, please. Uh oh. Okay. Nope. Hmm. Maybe that shock was unnecessarily greedy. But I really wanted to start pitching twice. And we've been through two paths. Felt justified. Yeet. I don't really know what our outs are. Everybody's attacking Ren. Somebody did not check to see what my life total was. And I really appreciate that. Uh, blow that up. Please. All 
All right, and we can't do anything about blocking. So I guess we should have just cast the Inquisition so we could block tilt. Huh. Uh, yeet. Okay. Creature, please. That's not a creature. Plus. Cancel. Hmm. I guess we just, like, play one of these. We can just, like, pitch it. We can pitch, pitch, go to one card. Hmm. Huh. So we can block, take two. So we uh, basically we need to make sure we're always blocking. So I guess we'll pick one up and play it. Pick one up, play it. Pass. And then now they can kill Ren if they really want to, which sucks. We can eat one of their creatures, but that doesn't just like do much for us. Blech. All at me? All right, well, let's pitch this. Let's pitch this. Go to blocks. Block the 2-2. Two -two. Okay, we'll take 2, go to 4. Interesting sequencing on these attacks. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Look at the wall. Okay. Yeet. Let's draw a good one. Now we can Inquisition them, I think, profitably. Oh, and Death Shadow is also a good pickup, so that lets us use our use our mana efficiently. Let's Inquisition them first, so they don't have the option of like doing anything stupid. All right, they have a Wrath. That's fine. Same two cards. This is a really strange holding pattern we are in. Pick this up to deal two to them. We're just going to kill them with Hazard. Hazard's just a Sulfuric Vortex. You heard it here first. Here's a very large creature. Uh, go. Why does this have Vigilance? What the crap? Alright, go, I guess. I wonder how far off we are of just, like, killing them. Because we can deal six, and if we can get five through, then they, that kills them. So yeah, if they attack with all their creatures, they're just, like, kind of dead. Hazard, Hazard pulling its weight? Hazard's pulling its weight. Why isn't the word soup have more words? See, that's what I'm talking about. You get me. You get me. This is a very, very strange game, and we are extremely behind on time. My opponent maximizing the clock for sure. <laughs> Tough turn. Tough turn. Because Wrath of God is awful. I think they just actually died a Wrath of God, right? Yeah, because we just killed them to Hazard. So they can't Wrath of God. They can't really attack either. I don't know what this is. All at me? Alright. Uh, block. Block. I guess this means they're planning to Wrath, right? Yeah, I think this means they're planning to Wrath. Wait, no, there's no way, because then they just die. Uh, okay, buddy. You just have to have a creature now. That's all of them. Okay. What is this? You're fetching a lot. Cut it out. Ranger captain. Okay, that's fine. So we can force, like, a bunch of chumps. Raven inspector. Okay. Now, do we have them dead to pitch, untap, draw, pitch, pitch? That's six, so we're short. Okay. Hmm. 
Okay. They have no cards in hand. Oh, this is... The plot thickens. Two bodies for one is powerful stuff. All right, land is not broken. Pick this up. So we have them dead in two. Or I'm sorry, yeah, we have them dead next turn, but we need to live, which we can't do if they kill our hazard. So they're just drawing to like path to exile or something to flicker our hazard. All right, fine, go. <sighs> okay. You dead? Amiria. That doesn't count as a hit. What's your other card? Boom! Go! <laughs> Hazard is so good! Oh gosh! <laughs> <laughs> Drake, you've had Overwatch open for three days? No, I have not. I have not played Overwatch. Oh, four land hand for the win. All you have to do is cast your boy Hazard. Or your girl. It's a girl. Your girl Hazard. It. You got this. This is some stupid set of matches. This is dumb. This is just dumb. We got next to no real constructed help at all. Like, round one... I have to remember again what we played against. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, that's right. Round one, we played against black, white, smallpox, lingering souls, beat shadow dot deck. Round two, we played mill. Round three, we played Grixis cards. Ground match four, we played against. What was this person on? Glissian. What were you on? What were you on? What were you on? This is this is Amiria. This is bottle white Amiria. What the crap is this? This is other. This is like another fatal push deck, right? What were they doing? No, this is Tron. All right, we we played against Tron. We got one real match out of the way. Whew. Okay. Nice. What am I doing? Um, Traverse Shadow, Tarmagoofy. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. This deck felt like it was doing some powerful things. We played against a lot of fatal push decks, and. I don't really think I'm ever going to be planning to try to win the black-white smallpox match. I don't think that one's remotely winnable. Now, Drown in the Lock is an interesting magic card that apparently people are excited to play in Modern and is actively very good against us. So, if that card is as powerful as people seem to think it is, then this deck probably gets a lot worse because it just kills all of our threats, as we saw. Did Hazard attack once? No. Hazard blocked three times, but we did not attack with Hazard once. It held down the fort. It held down the fort, and it dealt literally all 20 damage to our opponent, right? We just literally were pitching cards till they died, which is pretty repulsive. <laughs> oh. That was an aggressive dab. That was an aggressive win. Look at that. Look at this. This mono-red aggressive card that did a lot of blocking and a lot of pitching was super powerful. Not at all how I expected a game of magic with the shadow deck to go is pitching two lands a turn to uh, to hazard it in order to kill your opponent. But hey, sulfuric vortex is a sulfuric vortex. <laughs> You're damn right. You're damn right, Dom. So this deck, like I said, this deck's really interesting. Um, there's actually multiple times I did want to be able to traverse for um, Season Pyromancer because it would have been worth multiple bodies in the face of all those pushes. So, like, that is really interesting. Like, Tireless Tracker is really bad in our deck that has, like, 18 lands in it. It's good with Ren and Six, but, like, that's not in our main deck. So, I actually think I want this card to be a Season Pyromancer. Now, it's hard to cast. We only have three red sources in our deck. But if we're fetching knowing that we have that card in our deck, I think we're in a lot better shape. And so, yeah, I'm interested to have a Season Pyromancer in this deck for sure. That's a card I was definitely interested in having. It also mitigates the late game uh, discard spells that we drew multiple times. So I would have liked to have had that. Um, I liked the Cycle Lands. I liked the sideboard Ren and Sixes. They offered a lot of utility. The sideboard probably needs some tuning, but I wouldn't actually know how to tune it yet because we played against very few real decks. Um... I, I like the main deck Collagon's Command. I like the main deck playing Engineer. 
I think the only thing I would really change about the main deck before I would run it back again and try it would be uh, Season Pyromancer. I would want more matches with the stack under my belt because A, I'm inexperienced with Shadow, and B, um, we didn't really get a lot of true legitimate testing in. So, what can you do? It'd be like that sometimes. But I think this deck had a lot to offer and was really interesting. The Hazard was great. I was thinking I was going to want to snap cut that because we would never bring it in, but we brought it in and it was great, so I'm in. Um... Yeah, that's about all I have to say about Traverse Shadow. It's a sweet deck, offers a lot to the format. I would want to play test a lot more modern before I would make the decision whether or not I would play this, but this deck does feel like if there's merits to it in the current modern format, and I think that is enough for where we're at because modern is in a very, uh, I don't know, rapidly changing state. It is very, very volatile at the moment, at what is occupying the top tier space. So I think that Shadow can exploit that metagame through discard spells and all these linchpin decks. Uh, once again, Urza is one of the top decks on your radar in order to, yeah, that you're just like targeting. And I think having all these, having access to so many cards that interact well with artifacts is also something that is very attractive for this deck and like efficiently interacting with the, uh, with the Urza deck is also really nice. So I liked it. It was great. Thank you all for watching. Thank you, Tarma Goofy for the sub list. I really appreciate it. Um, we are going to be playing another league with Teamer Delver and Legacy here in just one moment. But before we do, I want to talk a little bit about our sponsors. I'm not going anywhere yet, Thieves. I'm going to play some Teamer Delver to practice for Philly. But this does end the modern portion. It ends this league and so and ends this YouTube video for those watching on YouTube. So thank you all for your support. Really appreciate you sticking through and watching. Um, this actually was pretty long. It took like two hours, 46 minutes-ish. So that was quite a, quite a long time of shadowing. Um, if you are watching, you have not yet followed, please jam that follow button. It's the easiest way to support me on Twitch, and we'll let you know when I go live. If you're watching on YouTube and you've enjoyed my content, please hit the subscribe button. It's the easiest way to support me on YouTube, and we'll let you know when I post more videos. Other ways you can support me, the stream, and Team Nova is to support my sponsors, which you can see their logos strewn about across the screen. There in the top center, you see the Mage logo and the Introspective logo. Mage is a mobile application that you can use to scan, sort, and buy Magic the Gathering cards. Um, they are a fantastic mobile application, the best I've seen for uh, Magic the Gathering. I, I've actually followed them pretty closely for many years um, as far as like the mobile app, I guess, space in Magic. And so I'm really, really happy they exist, really happy with the work they put out. And I highly, highly, highly recommend you download their application. It is free to download and just support their product. It's awesome. Also, you have Introspective, which is a clothing company that supports Team Nova and other teams on the SCG Tour. They do make our jerseys and they make some of the uh, apparel that you'll see me and the other members of Team Nova wear every now and again. Um, their stuff's really high quality. It looks really good. We have some hoodies coming in for the winter time that we're going to be sporting around as well. So expect that in the coming months. And you can save some money on their website using code TEAMNOVAMTG for 10% off, buying some sweet clothing and supporting a company that supports Magic Teams. So highly recommend checking it out. They're awesome. Um, next up, we got the lovely sponsors beneath my face here. To start off with, we got hipstersofthecoast.com. That is the content production website that Team Nova writes for. You'll see a lot of articles written by the members of Team Nova, as well as plenty of other reputable and excellent writers. Highly recommend you check them out. They have lots of other podcasts and merchandise for you to check out as well. All of it is free to look at, free to use, except the merchandise. Obviously, you can't free get merchandise from them. But it doesn't cost you a dime to get a little bit better at magic, read some good content, and support Team Nova. So check out Hips of the Coast. Next up, we got Manitraders.com, which is the rental service I'm using. I do not want to buy Ren and Sixes on Magic Online, so it is very, very fortunate I have access to Mana Traders during this particular, uh, particular night of streaming where I'm going to be playing an average of three Ren and Sixes in each deck I'm playing tonight. And I highly recommend you check them out as well. If you want to save some money, if you switch a lot of decks in on Magic Online and you want to test a lot of different tech without having to worry about the costs of buying and selling cards on Moto, is a fantastic service to use to just bypass all of that. And uh, one of my favorite features about it was that you can actually pay for mana traders with the ticks and they'll give you a slight bonus from ticks. So instead of selling at 90 cents a tick, they'll give you like a 20% bonus to where it's like, you know, a dollar ten or whatever and or a little less but you get the idea you can you get a little bit of bonus it'll pay for mana traders and you can basically be self-sufficient and go infinite if you are good at magic i guess um so how do i recommend you check them out you can use the code team of mtg for 15 percent off your first three months with them there's a code to get started in the panels below if you're on twitch and on in the description below if you're watching on youtube there's links to all the sponsors as well as the code you can use to save some money on their site and how much money you'll save 
Next up, you got the In Games, which is a store in Charlottesville that supports Team Nova. One of our players is local to that shop, and they let us buy and rent cards at a discount. And you can too using code Team Nova MTG on their storefront. Once again, link below. Check them out. Support a LGS that supports Team Nova, and uh, save a little bit of money in your singles and sealed products. So highly, highly, highly recommend you check them out as well. Last but not least, we got Inkland Customs, which is the artist that sponsors Team Nova. You can see uh, her lovely artwork on some of the latest tokens. Jessica Estefan, uh, Dominic Harvey, and Aaron Barrich all got their tokens tokens revealed on Twitter. You can find those uh, at Team Nova MTG. You can see those tokens. I believe at Inkland Customs has also posted about them. And her artwork's fantastic. My token is also done by her as well as the rest of Team Nova. She also did our logo and our play mats. So all of our artwork looks great. You can see some of the stuff that she's done as well on her website below. See some of the, all the people that she's I guess, immortalized in tokens. And you can get a custom token made by her yourself if you check her out at any of the many magic events she attends. So highly, highly, highly recommend you check her out as well. She has very, very fair prices and she's overall a fantastic person to work with. So check her out. She's also gonna be doing some of the stream artwork coming up and I'll post about that as soon as I know more. But we're, we're chugging along on that now that the Team Nova token's done. And uh, yeah, everybody have a great week.